New Well. New Well. That's us. That's me and you. <laughs> it's that time again, the new element in the house. On this beautiful summer-like night. So what's going on, my man? Man, it's hot, man. Oh, stop it. It's hot. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. It ain't hot. This is perfect weather here. here. Not... Close, baby. It's May, man. <laughs> it's hot. Hey, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. If this is global warming, I'll take it. Cause I'd rather be out here doing this, <laughs> feeling good in a tank top and in shorts. And if I want to run and want to run around in speedos, I'm gonna do so. Cause guess what? There ain't a chill in the air, and I ain't got to shovel snow. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah I'll, I'll feel you it. on that. <laughs> I'll feel you on that. Yeah. So everyone listening, everyone listening right now, while we kind of you know kick this thing off, this is uh, May 18, 2017, and tonight it's part two, flat Earth testimonies. We have. A very special guest lined up. This guy's a warrior. He's an inspiration. And he's getting the word out. So I cannot wait to bring him in in a couple minutes here. Uh, and he's waiting in the background. We have Robbie Davidson with us. So mm-hmm. this is going to be this is going to be a good show. So anyway, you know, besides this wait, wait, amazing wait, weather, hold on before 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 we get started, man. I, I want to apologize to you and our listening audience and our guests. Cause I, you know, these shows that we do on Thursday night, I still, I'm still working. I start working like six in the morning, and I don't get done working until eleven thirty, twelve midnight. You know what I mean? So I want to apologize to you guys. Sometimes, you know, I got, I got to make the fake money. Cause, uh, you know, it's just rough. It's just rough trying to, trying to support, you know, the family and all that. So I apologize. We know how it is. Sometimes I'll be. Yeah, sometimes I'll disappear off the air and y'all won't hear me, or I'll be, you know, saying a little bit of here, a little bit there, but you know, I'm here. I'm here. Let's bring the man of the uh, of the night in, Mr. Robbie Davidson. Welcome to the show, brother. How are you? Man, am I on with Am I on with Renegade and Ninja? Yes, yes you, you are. are. It's an awesome, awesome, man. I'm, I'm, welcome, brother. Welcome. Guys, man. Good to so, have you on, man. Well, before I ask you what's new with you, because we, we know what's new, we know what's coming, but we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, you know, like the title of the show, Flat Earth Testimonies. We want to hear from you. We want to hear – now, I, I know, kind of know your story. I mean, you were – I had the honor of talking with you on the phone a couple, uh, you know, a month or so ago. And – but for the listeners out there, show them, you know, introduce them to, to Robbie Davidson. Introduce them to, you know – from when you were younger, you know, the whole story of, you know, you really waking up the truth. Um, now, I, I've, I'm starting to realize something about people that are, that are waking up and really know the earth for what it is. They are, they're wise to other things, you know, whether it be the music industry, the same kind of music industry, chemtrails, or the dangers of vaccines and GMOs and stuff like that, which you are. So it's like everyone starts off and they get in what's called the truth movement. 
or, you know, you don't have to call the truth, but, but people wake up from their slumber, and they push away the lies, and then the next thing you know, like, our research just doesn't stop there. We keep looking at questions and things and going, huh, now this doesn't make sense. And I want everyone out there to hear this. <clears throat> There's a lot of people awake. We can, sp- I can't, st- and I'm sure you can't stand this either, but the term PSYOP. The flat earth is a PSYOP. Listen, you're dealing with people who are calling out PSYOPs. We know a PSYOP, but we also know what a lie is and what indoctrination is. And we are stepping forth and saying there's something wrong here. So, Robbie, give us your testimony, brother. From, from you know, day one, your whole, give, us your, give us your story leading up until now. And, you know, well, give all details yeah, I'll, by I'll, all means. I'll kind of Floor is off. yours. I, mean, I, 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 actually didn't, I actually didn't get saved until the age of 21. So I led a pretty rebellious life, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll. And uh, in my youth, um, I would say that a lot of what modern day science had taught me, that's what kind of kept me away from any notion that there would be this benevolent God or creator. Or I just thought it was fairy tales. It was nonsense. I mean, I used to take pleasure, you know, tormenting Christians. I used to, you know, take pleasure making fun, ridiculing them. So, I mean, when I get it now, I can totally relate and understand because at one point I was that guy that would be out there. And I mean, really, it wasn't really big. The computer internet wasn't really around much then, but I probably might've even been a keyboard warrior at that point. Cause I thought it was so ridiculous. And that's so amazing about what God can do to someone's life is just completely and radically change it. And that's exactly what happened to my life at the age of, you know, 21. So I'm going along, you know, doing whatever. And anyways, this one guy, you know, I started talking to him, and it was fascinating. We got into, like, end times, eschatology, and I was just all fascinated. And I remember, uh, you know, I wouldn't say I was an atheist, but I'd say an agnostic. You know, I mean, I didn't know, but I didn't really care. I mean, I'm living my life, man. I'm having a good time. I'm partying, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll. I mean, don't bug me about this religion. I mean, that's, that's nonsense. Um, so, anyways, I got talking with a guy, and uh, anyways, I said at the end of the conversation, I said, yeah, it's okay, though, man, because, you know, I mean, I'm a good person, that type of thing, you know, and he's like, it's not enough. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's just like, you got to be perfect. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about, right? And he kind of explained, you know, how Jesus came, and he was perfect in the sacrifice. And anyways, I was like, wow, yeah, that's kind of cool. And we got into the mark of the beast and other things like this, which I was really fascinated because, I mean, you could see the, the articles and the news, and you could kind of see the way the world was getting, and, you know, this guy's bringing up the Bible, and it all actually started when you know we were out late one night and all of a sudden he said dude i, I gotta get home you know i gotta go to church in the morning and i said what i said your parents make you go to church he's like no i want to go and i'm like what you want to go to church i just i couldn't understand That's how great. someone at that age would want to go to church i'm like i thought that was your parents drag you because earlier on my family was kind of more of a you know sun or easter christmas type of christians as they drag us out but i remember at 16 i remember there was that one time and i was going to this party and it was christmas and my grandma had flew in and we were all going to go you know we did this every year it was just a family thing that we did we went to church service you know christmas eve that kind of thing and i remember it was like my grandma flew in and they're like, hey, come to church. I'm like, no way, man, I'm going to a party. And they're like, no, 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 you better, you have to come. And I'm like, no. So I took off to the party. Well, my father came to the party because we were living in a small town at that point, And he dragged me out of the party in front of everyone by my ear. Okay. Needless to wow. say, we only got a few blocks away at the stoplight. I jumped out. I called him every name in the book, including ones oh. I can't even, even talk about as a Christian, let alone as a non-Christian. <laughs> but I just lost it. And at that point, my downward spiral began. I got more into drugs. Mm. I got into a wilder crowd. I just kind of spiraled, right? So it was at the age of 21. I'm living, you know, clubbing and I'm, you know, hanging out and stuff. And anyways, uh, you know, I had this talk and a few days went back, went by and I'm still going out to the clubs doing stuff. Well, I was staying over at my parents in the basement. And I remember it was about, you know, three, it was around, I don't know, three, four in the morning. And I remember kind of waking up and there was like this presence around me. And all I remember is I put up my hands and said, I am coming to you. It was really weird. That's all I remember. But I went back to sleep. The next morning I woke up and I'm looking at my parents have all these VHS tapes on the wall, uh, you know, old VHS tapes for the VCR. But the one that they had sitting in there that was glowing, I mean, it was glowing, was Jesus, you know, Jesus the film, you know. So I threw it in. I just was drawn to it. I grabbed it because the guy had already talked to me a few days earlier about this Jesus guy that I never really understood. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to check this out. Threw it in the VCR. remember watching it. At the end of it, I got on my knees and I gave my life to Christ. And that was it. And then since then... I've been involved with, like, prison ministry, youth ministry. I've been involved in, like, different medias. I've been in the Christian music industry. I've been in, the, you know, television, uh, radio. 
I've been in, um, you know, print. I've been in a lot of different Christian media and a lot of different ministries. So I got really involved in my pursuit and kind of growing with God and just understanding. Because at that point, I'm like, I want to know everything. I want to know what does it say about me, aliens? You know, sir? Let, me, let, me ask you a question. let me ask you a question real quick. I want to, I want to kind sure. of go back to what you just said. Um, well, sure. for one, you're mentioning about, you know, you're talking to your buddy. He's like, yeah, I got to, you know, get to bed. You know, I got to go to church. And you're like, oh, your parents are driving you to church. You know, my uncle had, uh, who's a pastor, made that joke at my grandmother's funeral recently. And he's like, yeah, I was a child. I was drugged or something like that. And we're all like, huh? He's like, yeah, she, she drugged me to a church every Sunday. <laughs> so the same drag, she drugged me to church. So it, it was a funny joke. But um, when you popped in that movie, and you start changing your ways. Now, this this is a big moment in your life. Let's be let's be real here, because that's a well, big moment for a lot of God people out there. Had to come to me. Yeah, because I had ignored because yeah. I had ignored God. I was walking the other way, and it actually took super like supernatural intervention. And being yep. saying, no, 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 like I don't think you understand. You know, you're going to serve me, and I'm going to show you the most incredible journey of your life, and that's exactly what He's done thus far for sure. Now, what happened though at so, that time? Now, you're saying you were running with this one one crowd, which we all were. I know I was. I know Ninja one by was. one, they left me. One by one, I became there the Bible freak. I became that guy that, hey, it's like, you know, you're cool and all that, Doug, you know, but don't mention that Jesus stuff, you know? So one by one, I just started to distance myself. I mean, I just, I mean, if did, it was one of the thing or the other, uh, yeah, I mean, that's one thing that you did, learned did really you, early on that, did, uh, yeah, now, a lot, you lose your friend. Did, 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 you, did you deal with the ridicule? Did you deal with people laughing at you and telling you you were stupid? And you're believing in a, I was in so a, on fire. A I didn't care. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't care. I mean, I was I was so on fire that I'm just like, dude, man, you, you know, you need to repent. I mean, I was like the type of guy that got so on fire that I'd be like running down the street telling people that you know they better repent or they're going to burn in hell, kind of thing. I was and that's what happened. I was passionate, <laughs> but I was like so completely just on fire, on top. I mean, and again, before I got saved in school, the only books I would read are the books that are required for passing the actual course. I hated reading. Right. Well, when I got saved, I sat down. I remember, because this was the following weekend, I sat down in a 24-hour diner, and I remember sitting there, and I basically polished off the entire New Testament in one sitting. I did not move. I just polished the entire thing. I started off Matthew, Mark, Luke. So, I mean, readers would come out to me like, dude, what are, you, what are you reading? I'm like, the Bible. Like, I mean, they could just see this joy. They could yeah. just lit up. And I remember a lot of people were saying, dude, wow, you're like glowing. I mean, you're alive. Like, something's going on. And people are like, That's oh, what happened. <laughs> It's a fad, you know, he's going to get into something else. And I remember people were saying, you know what, five years time, you're going to be into something else. It's just a fad. I'm like, this is not a fad. So one by one, I mean, I had to, you know, people that actually were very dismissive or that were very skeptical have all been silenced based on the fact that, uh, you know, it's now, you know, over, you know, 20 years and still going strong. And you know, so, yeah, you I mean, mentioned and, the and fad. I heard, I heard. Kind of, well, you mentioned about it being a fad. Yeah, people, oh, yeah, this year is trending right now. You know, you're, you're, this is something new in your life now. This is forever, because once he puts, yeah, places his hand on your heart, you completely change. And the funny thing is, I heard the same thing about flat Earth, and I laughed. I go, a fad? I go, no, the fad is a spinning ball belief. I go, because up until 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat. But now it's questionable, and people believe it's spinning ball. So it's, that's funny you brought that fat thing up, because I was just talking well, about the thing, about and you brought up, Yeah, and you brought up earlier on, you were kind of talking about, and this is the interesting thing about a lot of people in enclosed cosmology or in you know, research when it gets into the Earth and cosmos, is most of these people that basically are willing to go down that road have already been you know, open with a lot of things, whether, like you mentioned, chemtrails, the GMOs, but getting into 9-11. Right. What I explain to a lot of people, this subject matter, if you're sitting here listening to this show right now and you're having a hard time believing the government could even be involved in 9-11, this stuff is cool. you're just going to laugh at. You probably won't even compute, right? you got to start at JFK. Is there anything suspicious about JFK? Move to 9-11. You know? So for a lot of people that are in flat earth and closed cosmology, I would imagine that most of them have kind of gone through that thing where they've gone up to like learning about the Illuminati or getting into the elite and getting into right. the Luciferian, you know, order of like Bohemian Grove. I usually run into someone. Yeah, who, there you go. Say, hey, Bohemian Grove. If someone knows Bohemian Grove or they know the, the Georgia Guidestones, usually you're in good company. You can start moving even deeper stuff. But if you're dealing with someone right. that never even heard of Bohemian, they never heard of Skull and Bones, they've never heard of, you know, secret societies, and they're even still going, yeah, but the official report of 9-11, I mean, yeah, it was hijackers, four planes, you know. you got to go back, man. You can't start talking to them about chemtrails. I mean, the, the idea of people poisoning us, that won't compute with someone thinking the idea that they couldn't even do 9-11, right? So you always have to go baby steps. I find that it's really smart, and that's what yes. we're going to get into tonight. When it comes to my film that I came out with, Scientism Exposed, 
My idea with that was to come out and just start that journey. Just get people with a couple of right. you know, questioning things going, oh, that's see. interesting. Maybe I'll look into that, you know? And it, it was funny, when we talk 9-11, um, I've, I've gotten this so many times. Your government will never attack us. Oh, yeah, well, look back in the 1980s with the move, the move fire down in Philadelphia. How about this one? Go to Waco, Texas. Tell me the government don't attack its own people. They, they, they do experiments all the time without our knowledge. It's, mm-hmm. it's horrible. So, anyway, yeah, get, let's see. Um, man, you're, you're, I'll tell you something. Your testimony is awesome. Because, uh, like I said, yeah, I was so talking I mean, on the phone yeah, and like, to, up, hearing how yeah, awake you are is just like, better. wow, this is awesome. Yeah, I got into, I mean, I was fascinated by, like, uh, creation science. So, for me, blowing the whole thing off evolution, because for me, I used to laugh at Noah's Ark. I used to laugh at the fact that people believe that God just made people, that, of course, it was evolution over millions of years. So, I bought into all of these things. So, evolution was kind of my first breakdown. Even before I got into, like, when we're talking 9-11, chemtrails, all that, my first kind of world shift, my first, my worldview was really hitting the scientism, you know, of, of the day. And, again, evolution was a big one for me. I mean, under Understanding like, oh, wow, this has all been a lie. Like, there's been a cover-up. They've actually purposely tried to deceive mankind. What the, why would they do that? I mean, how many people would be involved? So I was fascinated. And then seeing all the true science and even good scientists that were coming forward supporting the data showing that, yeah, I mean, there is more data showing that we're, you know, er, you know early on you know, early in, in our development than billions and trillions of years, you know, and then getting into different things. And then it would lead me into, you know, like I said, eschatology. I studied all the world religions. I started studying all the cults. I started understanding all the different uh, branches of Protestantism, understanding Catholicism. But again, we went for years and years, just I was like a sponge. I mean, I couldn't get enough. So I wanted to know, okay, aliens, what's the Christian take on that? I'm going to study that, which led me into the Nephilim and getting into that, which was really fascinating. But what what I found really cool was that the Book of First Enoch speaks way more about creation than it does about the fallen ones, the watchers, the Nephilim, which I found really intriguing afterwards when I got into the subject matter. But again, this is the thing, this is the point, is I had studied a lot of things. So I don't need to understand that the world was governed by evil, evil people. It says in the Bible that Satan truly is the god of this world. You know, God warns all the time, do not love the world or anything in the world, right? The world's wisdom is foolishness to God. And again, what is the world's wisdom? It's usually the rocket scientists or the nuclear physicists. Or, you know, we're, we, we yes, put these right. people up on high pedestals in our day and say, these are our elite. These are the ones that have all the knowledge. They've got the degrees. They've gone to school. They're a lot smarter than me, so I'm going to trust them. But unfortunately, say, right. like you were talking about the music industry before, they sold their souls for rock and roll. I believe a lot yep. of these guys... Not all, but a lot of these guys have sold their soul for pushing Satan or pushing uh, scientism because scientism is nothing more than Satanism without the robes, right? Instead of robes, it's, it's Good uh, lab coats. So that's my point: yep. is it's been disguised and it's been put into a system that is not another belief, it's not another spiritual, you know, uh, religion. It is fact. It's reality. You don't argue with science, right? So they get us. They get us because they'll, they'll present something as science. But when you start breaking this stuff open and find out there's a massive difference between science and scientism, and that's what we'll discuss tonight because the entire Earth yes. and the cosmos and everything we see, the majority of it is astonishing and shocking when you find out the majority of the stuff that you believe were fact, it was scientifically proven, when you apply the scientific method and when you actually bring that to fruition, you don't find anything that sits in the realm of true science using empirical, you know, the true given scientific method. What you find are theories, the theory of evolution, the theory of gravity, the theory of relativity, the theory of yep. I mean, on and on it goes. But again, this is what's so dangerous, and I say this all the time, is everyone, if you're an atheist, an agnostic, a Buddhist, a Christian, a Muslim, I don't care what you are, every single person's worldview from an early age is shaped by scientism. How incredible exactly. to think from an early age that we start having reform our own beliefs, even in the truth community, but we mm-hmm. still have it enclosed in this scientism worldview. So therefore, aliens, okay, well then we're starting to think Star Trek and Star Wars because our, our worldview has been presented. What happens yes. if that worldview gets shattered and you find out, wait a minute, if you read the Bible and you start looking with your own senses, these two match up and you say, wait a minute, no, they couldn't have lied about this, this is too big. And that's the basically the 
big point here is this thing is so incredibly big that all the other things fit inside of it and they start making sense. You brought up global warming. It was kind of funny talking about the heat. But do you understand that the whole ozone layer and how they prescribe the whole global warming is destroyed when you take rid of the globe? There is no, there yeah, exactly. is no global warming. There is no climate change. It's all completely None. lies. And they're pushing an agenda yep. to enslave all of us and to pay our carbon tax. But, of course, we all yep. have to do our part to save Mother Earth. Oh, of course, Mother Gaia. Mother Gaia. I've seen so many awake people who claim to be awake go, you know, Mother Gaia. But I'm like, really? You're awake? Well, no, you're not. You better do some more research. Uh, so go, go back into your testimony, Robbie. You know, once you, yeah, know, okay, so, so you mean, became a Christian yeah, and, then, then, and you, you started running, you know, running down the streets and, Proclaiming of Jesus well, and, yeah. I mean, and I all the stuff. So, super passionate. what happened? Yeah, there? I was super passionate. I was super passionate. But I, all I'm saying is, I was really immature at the beginning. But I was really like on fire and I was passionate. But again, it just led me into so many things. I was like a sponge. I studied all the world religions because again, part of me, what was really interesting, is the first year I doubted like crazy. And I remember praying and saying, Lord, take this away. I don't even want to doubt. I just I want to go 100. percent And it was almost like I needed to fight for it. I needed. It was like prove all things. The Bible says. And apologetics became a big part of my entire uh, mission uh, when it came down to my ministry. I got heavy duty into apologetics because I didn't want to just believe something. I wanted the truth. And again, this is the ideal thing that we hear all the time is we hear, you know, the pursuit of truth or truth seekers or we hear the truth movement. But really, there was one person that claimed the embodiment of all truth is Jesus. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, right? John 14, 6. But what's really intriguing about that is either Jesus truly is who he said he is, or he's not. People will say, oh, you know, he's a prophet or he's a good man. He claimed to be divinity. I mean, there's certain things, and I love the thing with C.S. Lewis when he brings it up. He says, Jesus, you have, this is the only choices you have. It's either he's a lunatic, he's out of his complete mind, he's the world's biggest liar, or he truly is Lord. There is only three or, ways you can go when it comes to him. Or when it comes to the New Age movement, and we know they are <laughs> the New Age movement, you know, they're pretty much, the, the root of it is Luciferianism or Satanism, but they claim he's an ascended master. Correct, correct, correct. It's all, and again, what I find intriguing, when you study all the world religions, they all put them in there. I mean, Muslims basically put them up very, very high. I mean, most, in Islam, most believe that Jesus is the one that's going to return. And then you get into all the different religions. He's like, yeah, great, ascended master, or he's a fifth Amon, or he's a whatever. But again, all of these different things. Jesus is almost like part of the, the, uh, the rule book. It's almost like, okay, all these religions can be created, but you've got to throw them in there somewhere. But do not, and I mean do not, give him the true place of divinity when he claimed, I am the way, the truth. Not, you know, I'm going to teach you truth. He says, I am truth. I'm fully, I'm the only way to God, right? So all of these paths, all the paths that lead to God is a lie. And again, we're getting into new age. But again, this is what's really intriguing. When you take new age and Satanism and you look into scientism, understand that in my, uh, you know, in my latest film, like Scientism Exposed, these guys are saying, don't thank Jesus for dying for you. Thank the stars. For dying, it is them that birthed you. If you get into Neil deGrasse Tyson, he goes so far to say that, uh, that God is a pocket of scientific ignorance. I mean, these guys are anti-God. These guys aren't just a- oh, yeah. atheists. These guys hate God with a passion. So they are set up to destroy the credibility, the authority of God's word. Jesus said, you know, the, I mean, if you look in John or whatever, the word was, you know, with God and the word was God. Yes. And you start getting into yep. this, but understand that these guys truly understand that. But their mission is to completely turn the world against the truth, to turn the world against the only salvation. If anything, what do we get for our salvation? We get Bill Nye Saves the World on Netflix. Have you <laughs> caught that latest show? Oh, I mean, what a tragedy. Don't even promote hopefully, that. Don't, hopefully that that's waking people up. It's awful. But you know what's interesting? It is. I actually read the articles around. Even people that aren't even Christian are waking up to how crazy it's getting. They're saying, well, wait a minute. Yep. So yep. at least yep. people are starting to wake up and go, wait a minute, there's an agenda going on here. They're not even bringing science into that show anymore. They're bringing in, yep. you know, population control. We've got to reduce the population in that show. They're bringing in the whole LGBT, transgender, whatever you want kind of agenda. Perversion. Perversion. They're, bringing in, they're bringing in everything. Of course, evolution. You got, what's her name on stage? Rachel Bloom singing a song and saying it's scientific. It's evolution, baby. Right? So again, yes. understand that scientism is not, you know, people say, well, science, you know, it, it's separated from religion. Scientism is very spiritual. And hopefully through my film and other people that are really trying to expose this, whether it's, you know, enclosed cosmology or even just exposing scientism, 
um, people will start waking up and understand that there is a real deception, a real agenda going on, and people's souls are at stake. I mean, there's a big deal. You better be really truthful with your honest pursuit and looking at these matters because, you know, hypothetically, what would happen if you actually started looking at the Bible and saying, you know, maybe I'm going to look at all these verses. What would happen if I actually just took them literal? And that's what the astonishing thing is. When you start taking all these creation verses literal and you see all the scientific tests that are being done around the world, not even from Christians, they're coming up with the same conclusion, showing there is no curvature, no scientific experiment has ever proved the Earth is spinning, wobbling, flying through space. Every time they try, they try. it fails, it <laughs> fails, and then they move on to another you know, theory of relativity, or they get well, into black matter or dark matter. You're, right, yes, and that, well, that stuff there is kind of interesting, too, when you're dealing with CERN. But we're not even going to go into that. But that's, that's just where it's going to go, you know, left, right field or way off point. But let's get, let's get into that. What, you know, you are awake to so many things and so many, and I, I mean, I was listening to this show last night and I was just getting blown away by kind of some of the things that were being said. Oh, there are shills and this is a psyop and blah, blah, blah. But you're awake as many of us are. And that's the thing. We know all this stuff. But what was it? When was your turning point? When you start, you know, 9-11, okay, I was an inside job. The vaccines are killing people and maiming them for life. Cause the autism. You know, we know about uh, Monsanto and what they're trying to do. You know, I'm sure you, you I know you're awake to all this stuff. You know, you know mm-hmm. that aliens are demons. Mm-hmm. What was it along your journey? When was it? And what led you to start questioning the earth? And at that point, yeah. when yeah, you decided actually, to start you know, speaking out? My story, my story was I came across... A, and this was like early. This was like, I think, in uh, January or February of 2015. And I came across a video totally making fun of Genesis. And what they had showed is they showed this little ball kind of thing underwater, water above, water below, and fish. And it was a little cartoon. And it was made to actually make, you know, the Bible look stupid. But I remember watching it, and the verses would, would, would show up. And I grabbed my Bible, and i look, and I'm like, yeah, but that's what the Bible says. And then another verse would come up, and I'd be like, yeah, but that's what the Bible says. So, again, what I did is, is I started looking, and there was like a suggested video, and I clicked on that. And the minute I looked into it, and I'll tell you, there were a little couple that actually really stuck out to me. But uh, it was Dee Murphy, The Greatest Lie Ever Told, uh, Mark Sargent. But when I got into Mark Sargent's video, because me, I like the, putting the pieces together, right? I like to kind of formulate kind of like, okay, you know, why? And, like, there has to be more than just, just this. So I looked into it. And I was blown away. I mean, the minute I started looking into it, because at first I kind of laughed it off. I'd see a couple things through the years, like even uh, a couple years prior, something would pop up and like, there's people that believe the world's flat with a bunch of morons, you know? And I just brushed it off. But it was just the weirdest thing. And I remember going to my wife and I was like, you know, I think, my, uh, I think the earth is flat. And she's like, if that's what the Bible says, then it probably is. And she just instantly took it. I mean, I was scared to bring up my wife after I did all this research uh, because, you know, what do you do to say to your wife? And she thinks you're nuts, right? But she just instantly believed it. But I didn't instantly believe it. I had to research it out. I'm like, if anything, I went out to disprove it because I'm like, no, no, there's no way. But I remember when it registered uh, because, again, you know how we get – when it comes to us, we have to tell someone, right? So other than my wife, I had to tell one of my friends. And I remember he had helped me to tell you. I remember driving to get a tire. I go, dude, do you want me to blow your mind? And he's like, what? I'm like, what if I told you it's all a lie? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, what if I told you space is fake? And he just looks up. He's like thinking. He's like, oh, he's just, you can just see him. He's starting to get it. Anyways, I started explaining to him. And he is right, right, right. I mean, not many people get it that fast. But for me, it was a lot of research. I mean, a lot. And I mean, a lot of sleepless nights, actually, mostly. I don't think I slept when it hit me. And I knew, and I prayed, and I'm like, my goodness, it's been there all along. It was like, you just read the Bible, and it's like, it's all coming together. And you're like, how could I have messed that? How? And I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for still clinging on to man's wisdom, still clinging on to everything that I've been taught. But it was not in the Bible. My worldview was shaped even before I got saved. It had, it had crossed over. And again, I took that for granted because when I started reading, I'm like, where in the Bible does it say that the earth flies through the heavens like an eagle? Even poetically, it doesn't. There's not one yeah. verse to support the earth even moving. But what do you find? You find all these verses right. supporting otherwise. And, and, I, and like I said before, you know, when, when all these Christians are like, and I know some Christians out there that are wide awake, but they laugh at the truth of the earth. Mm-hmm. And because, well, they, well, scientism is involved in the indoctrination, all stuff like that, and they, they listen to these stupid theories and these crazy mathematical equations. And, and by the way, I love the, the one video someone shared. Matter of fact, on the show last night, they, were, they used this, this video as a comparison to a vacuum. Oh, you know, the bowling ball and the feather fall at the same time. 
Okay, great. So they, they did a vacuum test, but you can't get into space. And space isn't a vacuum. You can't get there. What's, what above is water. There's no vacuum in the water. It's water. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, listen to some of these Christians. The I, I said to myself, when, where in the Bible? Sorry? Where, 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 well, Robbie, let me ask you a question. Where in the Bible in Genesis, when it talks about God creating the earth, what, dude, are we missing something here? Maybe we don't have the right Bible. But where does it say God put all this in motion? Where did he say he spun the earth and flung us around the sun and is hurling us through endless space, the vacuum, at over six, you know, 600 some thousand miles an hour? Did you happen to find that passage in the Bible? I haven't been able to find it yet. And I'm still looking, no. but it's no. not there. I mean, that's the thing. And I used to go around using, you know, Isaiah 40, 22, you know, God sits above the circle and, hey, look at the globe. Yes. The globe. But really, when you start looking at it and you start getting at Isaiah, if you actually go a few chapters back, you find Isaiah talking about a ball. It actually is exactly. a word for ball. He clearly knew what a ball was. Like being inscribing a circle into In something, circle. you can't inscribe yep. a ball into something, right? So again, to and, me, it was like, okay, I want, I didn't care about anything at this point. I want to know what the Bible. So what was the bonus for me, though, was finding out all the empirical science that was being done and going, well, wait a minute, we've got a major problem. We can see things like 60, 70, you know, 80 miles away. If you just start doing their math, not cuckoo, crazy, flat earthers, getting the actual scientific Pythagorean theorem of mass, and you get into the curvature rate, you know, eight, mile, eight miles squared kind of thing, you get into that, and you, what you find is you should not see stuff. I mean, at 60 or 70 miles away, stuff is like 1.2. I think at 100 miles away, something is like 1.4 miles below the curvature of the Earth. Well, there's people all over the Earth right now doing experimentations. I mean, I have a P900. I've done them myself. I've clearly seen things that I shouldn't be able to see on zooming into stars what were we taught by scientism oh those stars don't worry about the bible the bible says that there's a sun a moon and also stars so we know that a sun is not stars and vice versa but what does scientism tell us oh all the stars are suns all the suns are stars right every single thing in the bible has been distorted by scientism it wasn't like satan wanted to just a couple a couple of things there it's like he has to go through every verse and screw with everything and he has he truly has anything that's far away is closer. Anything that scientism tells us is billions and trillions of years, it's probably, you know, very, very few years. Um, the list goes on. We're taught that basically suns exist and, and, and stars birthed us, right? There's no earth without suns. Yet the Bible says the earth was created before the sun, moon, and stars, right? So I'm saying as a serious Christian, you can sit there and play around with it as much as you want. But really, if you're going to actually sit there, you've got two ways to go look at this. Either you have to look at the Bible and say ignorant men wrote the Bible. They were stupid. They had no idea of the cosmos. And this is, a, this is one of the arguments that the Bible gets slammed at. But again, if you are sincere and truly understand that it's inspired, it's the inspired word of God, there is no error. And yet it's been written for men of all times then you have to understand that God would truly understand his creation. And even though it might be laughed at by the world, God says he laughs at the world's wisdom. I mean, think how crazy it is if we're still, we're immovable, we're fixed, we're not moving at all, and yet they're sitting up there and going, wow, they actually teach that they're flying around the universe at 666,000 miles an hour around the sun or whatever, around the universe, you know? The speeds and what they teach us that's probably laughable to God. But yet we have been so indoctrinated with this entire world system that we laugh at the Bible. We say, no, 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 it can't be, it can't be real. It has to be allegory or poetic. Or it has to be, and that's the danger. Because the minute you make something allegory, then what else is allegory? Or the minute you say there's an error in the Bible, like cosmology, Joshua, when he said he commanded the sun and the moon to stop, you know, over two specific places. No, no, no. What he meant was, you know, to command the earth to stop. Really what happened there was the earth stopped and the appearance was that they stopped, right? So we have a problem any way we look, if we're going to be serious and look at the Bible. But that's the beautiful thing. Anyone listening to this broadcast, even if you're skeptical with the Bible, here's the beautiful part. You can find stuff in the Bible and verify it scientifically, you know, using the scientific method. You can see a ton, a whack of people that are, they don't even yeah. read the Bible yet, and they are die hard trying to expose the fact that we have been lied to from birth. We have been lied to for centuries. This thing has been in motion for many, many years. And I know it sounds crazy, but I'll tell you one thing. GMOs or chemtrails might sound nuts to a lot of people listening right now at one point. Or maybe it was 9-11, the first time you heard 9-11. I thought, really? No, come on, the government couldn't do something that wicked. So each of us 
are on this journey. Each of us are on this scale. Where are you in the truth or, you know, the truth movement scale? You know, are you way back in 9-11? Are you here? Are you there? This stuff is very advanced stuff because when you understand you crack this, you find out that really, truly, and I'm going to say this, there is nothing, there is no bigger deception than the deception that we're going to be talking about this evening. There is none. So even just hypothetically, even if you think we're crazy, at least we're talking about the most craziest deception. But understand there's nothing bigger or grander than this deception. Um, you know, right. I've never heard anyone bring up. Well, there's one more. They could say it was bigger. Well, the Satan Which is, is real. You know, that's his biggest joke of all, to convince people that he's not real. He's just a myth. That way he can Correct. do damage behind mm-hmm. the scenes. And it's funny you mentioned about the sun and the moon being stopped in the sky. That's one of the things that Ninja, like when he woke up recently, um, that's one of his biggest points. Like you can't stop the sun and the moon in the sky if we're spinning and going around and being hurled. It doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. It, you, just, you, you can't do it unless you're a fixed plane, unless you know you're, you're are motionless and stationary. And here's another one. I love this verse. And I just did this last Friday night or Saturday night. Ecclesiastes 1.9, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Now, Robbie, it says under the sun. And the funny thing is, this is NIV, just the way it just popped up. But I mean, I can go to English Standard Version. It says under the sun. I can go to King James, which we did. I can go all these translations. Every one of them says the same thing, under the sun. Now, when you look at – now, Robin, this is something that we're going to go into that you went into. I was watching one of your videos, and you were talking about the, the flat earth society versus real flat earthers. And I kind of hate the term flat earther, but people who believe in the biblical earth. You know, not what NASA wants us to believe or these uh, philosophers want us to believe, but under. You, you, when you look at a stationary world, okay, fixed, unmovable, that sun's going around us. We're not going around it. We're literally under that sun. And as you were saying earlier, that sun is different from the stars. Especially when you look at some of the pictures taken of these stars, they are they don't look like our sun at all. So we're uh, I've under never the, seen sun. the sun twinkle. Yeah, I've never seen the sun twinkle. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that verse right there to me is huge. It's we are under it. Christians, yeah. if you're out there, I mean, you have directional, to look for these directional key studies. Words. If you get in the Bible and you just study just directional words, every time it refers to up or down, it's unbelievable. So, I mean, I know a brother that's actually kind of taking the task of finding out how many there are and then find out all the creation verses. But we just we laugh that off. Say, well, that's just figure to speech, is it? On a flying ball, right. you know, a spinning ball flying through space, where is up? Where is down? I think Satan is so crafty that he would distort even basic mm. directions. Because I'll tell you, anytime most people. You know, if my uh, daughter comes up to me and says, Daddy, you know, where's heaven? I point up, right? And it says, where's heaven? You know, right. I point down. Whatever. All I'm saying is directional. If you look, people looked up. When Jesus, you know, when he ascended, he went up into the clouds, up, right? On a, sp- you know, spinning ball flying through space. Where's up? Did he go out sideways? You know, where was it? It was a perfect, you know. <laughs> well, we have a big problem. We have a big problem with a lot of these verses. Not to mention, when Jesus comes, every eye will see him. Try to explain right. that, even to a pastor. I, I've approached pastors, Boom. and it's a very problematic verse for them. Right. And, and you know what? And, and just like when, well, when Satan was with, with Jesus, and he's look, they're looking over the world, you know, if you just you know, turn to me, we'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. And he can see all the kingdoms. That's impossible on a ball. You can't see under you. And as you're saying about you know, pointing up and pointing down, biblical flat earth, the real earth, there is an up and there is a down. That's the funny thing. And I, I recently made a, a meme. I hate that word. It drives me nuts. But I, I made a, a, a picture. And it showed people looking up on the top of the, the ball and then looking down. So, and I wrote, you know, to them it's up. You know, in that direction, you know, to this guy it's down. And then I showed, you know, the people yes. on the top looking down and the guy on the bottom looking down. The people on the top are looking down, but the people on the bottom, he's looking up. See, that's confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. And there's right. a biblical verse attached to that that I put right on that picture. That is absolute confusion. You know, who's up and who's that's, down? That's why, who's I, that's why, 
That's why I don't understand how Christians can't grasp this, how it's biblical. It's in the Bible. Everything that we're talking about is written in the Bible. It even talk, look, read Job. It's all about the creation. When God is, is getting on Job and his buddies about how they think they're so smart and so wise, and God is telling them, Let me, where was you at when I created the foundations of the earth? And he's talking about how he made the earth. And he's talking about how he pushed down, like when, he's, uh, when the kings back in the day would steal an envelope, they would put a ball, like wax on the envelope, and they would push down on the wax to seal the envelope. He said that's how he made the earth. So when you push down on wax, like with a ring or something, it creates a flat surface with an edge around it. And that's how God described the earth. And you're pushing down. But, but to the people on the bottom, that'd be pushing up. You see where the confusion comes in? But if you really li- read your Bible and, and really – see, what, what, what Christians need to do, or anyone else out there, start reading your Bible because it is really a flat-earth book. And matter of fact, I was sent a picture from the early 1500s of the Bible. It literally states flat earth in the Bible. That's a fact. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. But well, you why, read why, between why the lines, so hard? people. Why is it so hard for them to believe this, though? I mean, we've been lying to about – and this government, can I ask all, go, all governments of the world. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt there, Ninja. Ninja. Can I ask you a question, though? Those same guys that you're, you're saying they won't believe, do they believe they landed on the moon in 1968? Do they believe they landed on the moon? I'm going to believe it. Some of them say no. That's what I'm saying. Some of them That's say no. Some do say no. Some do say no. Point. It's, yeah, yeah. I would say the majority, though, I would say the majority of people that are in closed cosmology or flat earth. I've already cracked the moon landing. I would say that the majority of people you talk to that think you're out of your mind for talking about this matter, if you ask them and say, do you believe they land on the moon? Most of them are going to say, yeah, of course they land on the moon. Or, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, yep. again, you almost need to crack that. You have to understand that you're going, this is the mother load. There is nothing bigger than this. This is, this is so – it's harder it, – I mean, I'm talking diehard truther. I'm talking into everything. Bohemian Grove, the, the elite, I mean, Satanism. I mean, they studied it all. They come across this. If we're laughing at it, when we first hear about it, I mean, think about it. You almost have to be compassionate and understand there is maybe a few years for these people that we have to, it's almost like you have to go graciously. You have to go slowly. You have to kind of gauge them, see where they're at. Because if you go too strong with something like this, it should it, it just blow up their brain. I mean, it's such a big, yeah. big matter. So that's why I say the moon lighting. It's the cognitive dissonance, you know? That's what that is. Right. The, the belief system is being shattered when you tell them something like that. Sure. sure, but I would laugh, too. I would, If you guys were having this show, and it was five years ago, and I wasn't at the proper time and the, the right place and stuff, I probably would laugh to you guys, too. I'd probably call them and say, you're a bunch of morons. You know what I mean? All I'm saying right. is, you have to understand, where is someone on their journey? How, how many things have, have they been open to or they've looked into? Again, if someone's still looking at the link between vaccinations and autism, if they're saying, of course, vaccinations are good for you, all of them, trust your doctors. You can't be bringing up this stuff to them, telling them that the world's flat and that the, everyone's lying yeah. to them. I mean, they're going to think you're out of your mind. So yeah, but- what I'm saying is we have to get smarter about how we gauge where someone's at. And if we know they're at 9-11 right. or we know they're just looking into chemtrails, Maybe it's time to just get, let them digest that a little bit and say, isn't that interesting? I wonder why they poison us. You know, what about you know, the whole climate change? And what about the whole ozone layer? What if that's, that's a lie? And then just one by one. So I find mm, when you get people okay. asking questions, when you get people asking questions, then they, they kind of go on that journey themselves because they're like, oh, okay, because everyone comes down to this. Why would they lie, right? Why my would th- they lie? My thing, is this, though. my thing is this. When you get Christians that, that – that, um, you know, know all the stuff that we know as far as the chemtrails and 9-11 and all that. And they know that, that, that we've been lied to about that. Why is it so hard for them to believe that we've been lied to about the earth being, being around? That's my point. Yeah. They already know they all this stuff. So that, but they still exactly. won't believe this one thing. They won't believe that. And, you know, we, we, they can talk about being indoctrinated in school, how the schools indoctrinating the whole yeah. generation. You hear that from a lot of them. But they won't believe no this. No, they won't because, I mean, if, if someone walked up to you and said your parents aren't your real parents, I mean, that would be a shock to the system. I would go so far as to say that this, in literal terms, is more of a shock to the system than even being told that your parents were never mm-hmm. truly your parents. I think that a person oh, yeah. could, could come to grips with that a little bit better when they research, but understanding that everything, and I mean everything they believe from an yep. early age is a lie. I mean, it's just... It, it, it's a scary thing. It's like people don't want to, you know, hold, you know, let go of their ball, they say, right? But again, it's like a security yep. blanket. And I don't mean that saying they're childish or anything. We all have them. But what I'm saying is it's like a security. I mean, it's a security to feel safe, that if you understand home. creation, that you understand yeah, the world you live in. 
that's cognitive dissonance. That's what I'm saying. They, their whole belief yeah. system is being shattered when you tell them stuff like this. But here's the thing. You know, I, I told my kids this years ago that the earth was flat. And they weren't okay. But I said, don't just listen to me. And I started showing them stuff. They started researching stuff. And now they see it for themselves. That's all we ask from people, you guys listening. Okay. And then you just go look at it. Yeah. Go look for yourself. Yeah. You know, we're not, yeah. we're not trying yeah. to, we're not indoctrinating you. We're telling you. No, we're not. We know. But, but we're telling you to look for yourself. Look outside and see that the horizon is called a horizon for a reason. It's, yeah. it's horizontal. It's t- they tell you that. Look out C your level. window and see for yourself. That's C all you level. need to do. See yes, levels. Not put some water curve. down somewhere. Put water, put water anywhere. Water is always level. How can it be on a curve? <laughs> Hey, you know what's funny yeah, though? Exactly. These I'm telling you, some of these some of these people entrenched in scientism and entrenched in the, the lie, the indoctrination, they will give you a bunch of mumbo jumbo to justify a lie. And it's yes. Bobby, like you had just mentioned, the same thing goes with vaccines. The same thing goes with chemtrails. The same thing goes with with nine um, eleven truth. People, you who are awake. You know this. You've been through this. Your, your families have alienated you when you were trying to tell them about vaccines. I deal with so many people who deal with this on a regular basis. Their families disown them. Or how about this one? Your newborn. Maybe your pediatrician kicked you out of there because you know truth. That guy paid to be brainwashed and get a degree. And he's like, well, I can't, you know, I'm sorry. You're, you're not going to be here anymore. You've got to go. These things, that you were alienated from all these people when you were trying to speak truth. But let me ask you a question. When it comes to people telling you the truth of the earth, why do you want to alienate them? We're all awake here. We're all part of mm-hmm. speaking truth. But like we're all t- saying right now, why is it so hard for you to break that programming, that indoctrination? I mean, come on. Star Wars was cool. I get it. Star Trek was cool. I get it. The thought of space. You know, being an astronaut and going up, I get it. But there's nothing out there, okay? There is no space. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get out of this enclosed place that we live. This is a, a captured mm-hmm. system. Once you realize that, everything else starts really making sense. And as Robbie's pointing out, if this gets widely known, there's a lot involved in the web of lies that's going to get unraveled, and there's a lot of people that have a lot of explaining to do or jail time. Yeah. I mean, we, were talking, we, talked last, we talked last week about that, how I was saying that this is the greatest deception. And, and it, is the grand, it is the grand delusion. It is the great deception. That, 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 because it's hiding creation. It's hiding God. It's keeping God yeah. out of the equation. So and if this ever broke through that they were lying to us, I mean, look at, look at, the, look at the consequences they would, they would go through. Look at how big that would be. It's too big. They would never, never say that this ain't true. They have to keep this line going forever. Absolutely. Because it is there's a lot of too money huge it. for it not to be. There's a lot of money in it. What they say it is. There's, it's too big. There's a, all the people making the globe, all the people making the textbooks, all the teachers. I mean, there's so much money involved in the globe lie. There really is, besides the big agenda on the, high, you know, on the big side. But other than that, like on the small side, there's so much money being made on the globe lie. And that's something yep. else. People, when the truth came out, they don't want the truth to come out because they're making money, just like vaccines. You know, people find out the truth, they're going to start going, out. I don't want that flu shot. Well, now Big Pharma, you know, they're losing money. And, then, well, of course, they'll use their puppet politicians and try to enforce yeah. it on you. But it's kind of like the globe model versus, yeah. you know, the real truth of the earth. They're, they force yeah, it and I think I think very few people actually go out 100% deceiving people based on this. I think they were taught it, and they were taught it by someone. And I just think it's so entrenched that it's not like people wake up in the morning and then say, okay, we get to go out and deceive everyone. I think it's very few. It's almost like an upper echelon. And, you know, there's tons of people even in NASA that have no clue. They just build their things for their rocket right. ships, and they honestly believe yeah. they're going up into space, right, or they're going to Mars. I mean, these guys that built the rover believe that that rover is sitting on Mars, taking pictures and sending them back, you know, 120 million <laughs> miles away. But they believe well, that. But they believe that. They're it, not sitting there, you know, waking up and saying, ha we're like totally lying to the whole world. That's my point. A lot of people think that, you know, this is like this is huge conspiracy. There's so many people involved. And that's why a lot of people can't believe this because there's like too many people have to be involved. And no, yes. they don't. All or, people have to do is just believe what they've been taught. 
Uh, well, I said, you just got to get Robert people to on teach. That. You just got to get people to teach. And the thing, the thing that gets me is, is um, you know, they look at us like we're crazy for believing that we're sitting on a flat surface that doesn't move. They've been, we've been taught that we're spinning on a ball. There's people upside down. There's people sideways on the ball. There's people upright on the ball. There's people on 90 degree angles on the ball, and everybody's spinning, right. and no the reward is coming off. And we're tilted at the same time, and then we're hurling through space, <laughs> spinning in the galaxy around the sun. That's ninety-three Ninja, million miles Ninja, away from us. Ninja, you can well, tell go. all of that, and people will actually take you more serious if you say that all three of us right now, if we decide to be females, then I guess we're women. They'll be like, "Yeah, that makes a lot of sense." But the minute you say, "I don't think I'm moving," oh, you're the biggest moron, right? That's how yeah. crazy <laughs> our world, how depraved our world is. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, okay, hey, Robbie. You can be standing Robbie, still, quick. and you know, do you feel like you're moving? You can say it to yourself. Do you feel like you're spinning? No. What do, you how drink, do you know you're If you drink spinning? a lot of alcohol, if you drink a lot of alcohol, and you what? Know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, hey, I want to say something real quick, because this is, I want to chime in on what Robbie was just talking about with NASA and people, like, you know, thinking this, and we have to remember something. When it comes to, like, NASA or government or whatever, whoever's behind uh, the whole Earth lie, it's all compartmentalized. So you're not going to be shown truth. You're only going to know what they want you to know and do your dang job. This is your job. Do it, dang it. So, and yep. that's it. And people at the top, you know, you know, when it comes to tracking satellites or whatever or anything, they can be feeding you false data. I mean, come on. If they're trying to hide one of the biggest lies of all times, trust me, there's, there's a little bit more involved in it. So they hire you to basically deceive the masses, but at the same time, because it's compartmentalized, they are being deceived from the people above them who really know truth. And there's people who have exposed this, people that have worked within NASA, Lockheed Martin, and they've heard things behind the scenes. And even some of the people doing those jobs, getting that paycheck, they do know the truth of the earth, but they're just there to get a paycheck. And I was speaking about that last night. But that's the thing. It's, you know, and that is the misconception. Oh, well, how, how, can this, how can all these people know what they know and you know, not expose because they really don't know. They really don't know. They, they're only mm-hmm. being told this much. Rather than looking into it, they're just going with it. Hey, I'm with NASA. Hey, I'm tracking satellites. No, you're, you're tracking them. He, he got on a white coat and a tie. That guy got yeah. a white coat and tie on. He must be telling the truth. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, we're at you the top of the hour. Let's, let's take a quick break. And we come back in the second part of the hour. We'll hammer down on some of this stuff. Robbie, I do got some questions for you, and most of all, I, I do want you to talk about Celebrate Truth, but what also is coming in November? That's going to be huge. So, Good. everyone hang tight. We will be back Be back very shortly. Um, give us about six to eight minutes. going to play a couple ads and a song, and we will be right back. Hello everyone, my name is Suzanne Marr and I'm founder of Bye Bye Blue Sky and we have a passion for the planet. Bye Bye Blue Sky is a dedicated global public environmental movement who seeks to be a voice for all living creatures and ecosystems and to protect human health and safeguard the natural environment, air, water and land which our sustenance depends. We use education, peaceful protest, and creative communication to expose one of the world's largest and most significant ecological threats and preeminent disasters, commonly known as climate engineering or chemtrails. Please visit our website, bybyebluesky.com, and learn the truth about the sinister aerosol spraying. There are many media articles, patents, government white papers, which are available on our site, which attest to these programs. We also have awareness items, bumper stickers, t-shirts, which can be purchased, and brochures and business cards, which can be downloaded and distributed. There are a number of ongoing Bye Bye Blue Sky GoFundMe billboard campaigns in North America. The link's available on our website. I encourage everyone to donate to these billboards. A few dollars can save the planet. Please also join Bye Bye Blue Sky on our Facebook page of the same name and meet dedicated and like minds. Thank you. Right here. 
<laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander on this earth, <laughs> and on this earth, and in, uh, in the world we can't see. I sold my soul to the devil. devil. It doesn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Now for a second, stop the fake. What's up with all these bats in the industry? Dead blood money be white. or a power up, usually Regia, and order him to tell the demons under him to follow every record. And we are back. You are listening live right now to the new element on Intimate Source Broadcast Network, and I am Renegade Smith, joined by my man, Ninja Scroll. And what you just heard right there was my song titled Pawns, which I was talking about in the beginning of the show. That is my little attack against the music industry. And if you take Chris Cornell's death, well, yeah, I spoke about it there. And tonight, topic, Flat Earth Testimonies Part 2, and we are joined by Robbie Davidson. Ninja, I'm going to tell you something, man. This is a good show right here. And I, besides myself, besides with the weather, but to have Mr. Davidson on himself. And we are bringing him back in right now. All right, Robbie, we are back live, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time tonight, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, I'm ready for uh, hour two. Oh yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go deep in this one. So, talking about now, I want you to talk about when you seriously got in to the truth of the earth. And I, I you know, when, when people talk about the Bible. You know, oh, you believe in the Bible? No, I don't believe in it. I know. I know. Oh, you believe in flat earth? No, I don't I don't believe in it. I know. When you got to that point in your life, what 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 came about? Like when did you decide to go on your mission? Start and celebrate truth. You know, we're or we're also yeah. gonna talk about the flat earth conference coming up. But at that yeah, point, I mean, like it you saw the lie, the the grand scheme. And this is a big one, like we we're saying. It, it's the unraveling of so much, it will literally unravel their web, their web of lies. So when, like when you got to that point, like what happened that day? Like when you got that gleam in your eyes? So go ahead, brother. You got that it was uh, February, yeah, like February of 2015. And um, for three days, I mean, I didn't sleep. I mean, I was... Uh, just absolutely, I couldn't put it down. So ordered books from like Robotham and like all kind of the, the greats from like the 19th century getting into the hundreds and really reading. Uh, I couldn't stop watching enough uh, videos. I mean, I just, I couldn't get more and more of it. And again, for me, it was my journey leading up to that. Once I got to the point of going, wow, this is all truthful and just looking up and staring up in the sky. I mean, I just never looked at anything the same again. I mean, I would look up and I would marvel more so uh, at the cosmos than I ever did, even when I was told it was billions and trillions of light years and you know, just all of this stuff that we were taught. Uh, to me, it was more magnificent, more awe-inspiring when I understood that God is literally right above me and he looks down on the earth, just as the Bible describes, getting into you know, the firmament dividing the waters from the waters. To me, it was so refreshing that I could just look at the Bible and say, you know what, if the whole world laughs at me, and, you know, it doesn't matter because I'm going to stand on every jot and tittle. I'm going to stand on every word 
that you say here, because truly this is the truth. And to me, it was unbelievable because that's exactly what's happened. Some people are like, oh, well, you just got into this, become popular. It's like, do you understand that you don't choose this topic to become popular? If anything, your life no, becomes you, the hardest it's you ever hated. been. You get laughed. You get hated you get quick. Yes, ridiculed. Who, Family members. I mean, I've been a controversial guy my whole life, even at, you know, as a Christian, getting into some pretty deep you know, subject matter, and yet I've never really lost you know, family members or never had infighting and these types of things. This was the one topic that it was unbelievable, the response. And even if a person was going to take it and say, well, it's no big deal, it's just tertiary, I mean, what does it matter anyways? People will say that in one breath. What does it matter? And yet they go bonkers. They go absolutely crazy on you. Yes. I mean, to actually elicit this type of response from people, you understand that something deeper is going on. And I just look spiritual, at it like, brother. you know what, it's I'm going to pray, I'm going to hope, and I'm going to continue you know, preaching the truth. But I never, ever go so far as to say this is salvational. And I would never divide from my Christian brother or sister in Christ that believes you know, in a heliocentric model. But it's the same thing for me that I'm like, you know what? You know, it matters. Truth matters. And just like you might be passionate on one of your topics, and I mean, you know, we, we can debate about all sorts of things. For me, this is something that I understand that a lot of people, it will be so hard to digest just because, you know, where are they on the conspiracy? Where are they on the truth? If they're not even... Right. Like right. I said, this is so big. So I just, I, I hope that people are listening, the people that are diehard, even the people that are coming at this and laughing at it. I laughed at this too. It was absolutely ridiculous. And again, I'm not going to put my name on the line, put my reputation out there to be looked at as a fool. For me, I was like apologetics. When I first got saved, I didn't want to just believe something. I want to know the truth. It's no big deal if, if you believe with all your might that you can fly and that you go on top of a building and you jump and you go, I'm going to fly. Well, you know what? You're going to hit the ground. The same applies with it doesn't really matter at the end of the day what you believe. What matters is what's the truth. And to me, anyone that understands the truth in Jesus, you know, the way, the truth, and the life, like we talked about in the first hour, to me, that is the most important thing. But understand that if you read the Bible clearly and you understand Jesus' claims, Jesus truly is the creator. You know, people talk about the creator all the time. You understand that Jesus is the creator. It says all things were created by him. And nothing was created by him, you know. So we have to understand right. that. You know, you know, know, right. Go ahead, Robbie. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, you, 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 you know, going back to what you were just saying, that, that, that's something big, and, and it drives me crazy. I was just watching a post the other day. Oh, these flat earthers are nuts. You know, if I find one, I delete them right away. Well, you're not sure. You know, let's go back into when you woke up. You know, I'm sure that that you also were, you know, deleted by people. That's the only way to act. You know, well, we wonder why the world is so bad right now. Like, and, 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 and you know, and going back into what you're saying, this is a big deal. You know, I remember one time at one point in my life, you know, you see the name of Jesus, and I know you know this, you got a serious reaction out of, out of some people. You could be walking down the street and you look at them and say, hey, man, Jesus loves you. F you, you're crazy, he doesn't exist. You know, it's like demons spoke out of them all of a sudden. But now it's like you mentioned flat earth and people go off the hinges. It's like, what? Really? But you're awake to all these other things? But yet this one thing, you really need that ball. You really need this to be spinning to make it all make sense? You've been lied to to this point. Why can't you understand that? It, it's mind-blowing. I, I, I just, I, 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 seeing people's reaction, it's kind of disturbing, and, and they want to call this the truth movement. People, you got to go back and, and think to when you first woke up and how people alienated you. You need to take that next step and go into volume two of being awake. <laughs> so anyway, you, you got into this. You started Celebrate Truth, right? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. You know, what – now, let's go on from there. I mean, let's talk about your yeah, documentary. I mean, you got some amazing you know? yeah. I've always been outspoken on like, – and I've done so much research. I mean, any of my friends or any of gatherings, I mean, I, I'd be talking about, you know, everything from Boston bombing, Sandy Hook. I mean, I'd be talking about, you know, getting into the deep stuff when you get into the Luciferians and you're getting into the global elite. And so I've always been outspoken, but it wasn't until this topic – 
that basically catapult me right onto YouTube. I mean, I always thought about it. You know, it'd be kind of fun, you know, talking and putting stuff together. I was always, uh, you know, I loved putting stuff together as far as, you know, working with Adobe and Photoshop and Premiere Pro and After Effects. And, you know, I've always tinkered away at that. And I knew, I knew that I should be putting stuff out, getting truth out there, even going through all of the research and finding out all these amazing channels out there and learning from them as well. But it wasn't until this topic that I was like, I have to. I have to, and I know that I'm going to be laughed at. I know I'm going to be mocked and ridiculed. I know I'm going to lose family members over this. I, I, to tell you the truth, though, I didn't think it would be as extreme. I was ready. I was ready for you know, you know, things to happen. But I never thought it would go to this level. But for me, it was like, yeah, I have to do this. It was like God saying, it's time. It was time. And it was always kind of tugging on my heart, not so much to actually start up a channel and do it. But at that point, it was like, you know what? It's time to celebrate truth, to put it up there, everything, and just give honor and glory to Jesus and be able to do it in such a way that basically, you know what? I've always been passionate about the gospel. I love sharing my faith. I love talking to people and showing the only hope that lies within. So for me, it was like as long as whatever I do, my main emphasis, I never get it off track, that the gospel, to me, the good news of Jesus is always the most important. And no, I'm not going to crown it down. People, you know, I'm, I wasn't about that. And it was about presenting it because to me, it was like, look, you want to be a truth seeker? You want to understand truth? Then at least investigate the, the one that actually claimed to be the truth. Nobody else has ever made claims like Jesus did. So at least discount them. Research and honestly do it with a sincere heart. Look into it and say, you know what? This kind of matters. This is a guy that kind of, you know, did some remarkable things. There's a lot of people in the world that believe it. I might as well look and see what he says because with what he is saying, nothing that we do can earn our way. To you know, God, nothing can basically make us perfect, but perfection, you know, coming down and being ransomed for us because he loved us that much. To me, it was like, this is important. I want to throw that out there. But in the meantime, I want to make sure that I investigate all areas of truth that are found in the Word of God. And again, if you're, if you're listening right now, and you're like, I don't know, how do I even trust that Bible? Start there, man, because I was the same way. I'm like, this Bible written by a bunch of dudes, and I, I used to say the same lines. But then, when I stopped and thought about it, I'm like, have I even read it? Did I just listen? Did I parrot a bunch of what people were saying? Like, ah, you know, I don't believe in the Bible. Well, did I even read it? No, I didn't. So for me, it was important to actually, I'm going to look into this. You, and I'm, I'm encouraging you, anyone that's listening to start really looking into this. You can laugh at it, think it's ridiculous, but what is it going to hurt? To just say, I'm going to seriously just look into this, because what if it completely changes your life? I can assure you that if you truly understand and truth is what saves you, you will never be the same again. You brought up a really good point right there. And going back to your video, and I wanted to, get, oh, I wanted to get you on the point of the flatter society, basically them trying to, you know, people thinking they're speaking for everybody. Mm-hmm. People don't under you, you mentioned something in that one video. People don't understand the flat Earth. They get a wolf of groupthink. They see all their friends laughing at it and going, "Oh, he's crazy!" So they instantly want to jump aboard. You know, it's just like the Bible. They never mm-hmm. looked into it. They never really looked into it. And here's the funny thing is, you know, when it comes to flat earth, they never looked into it. Here's another thing, too, which is brought up. They don't even know the facts of the supposed spinning ball. They mm-hmm. have no nope. clue. Nope. Now, some of them do, but they're still sticking with it. Even though they're awake, they're still sticking with it because they need, they need their rock, man. They need their rock. <laughs> but mm-hmm. you made a really good point in that. People don't even know really what flat earth is about, being a flat earther. No. And I, I, no. I hate titles. I really do hate titles. Um, that name just kind of irritates me for some reason, but it is what it is, I guess, you know. Um, I personally go by the closed creationist. I mean, when I'm talking to people, it is yes. just more response. If I run into someone and I say, hey, I'm an enclosed creationist, oh, what's that? You know, like, that's intriguing. And I can start breaking it down. But the minute you say flat earth, something triggers, and they just think you're a moron, yes. and they'll just walk away kind of thing. So to me, that's part of the deception. The part of the deception was showing the ships going over the edge, right? Part of the deception was showing it resting on turtles. Part of the deception was showing a disc flying through space. None of these things yes. is accurate. And so that's the first breakdown. You know, the Flat Earth Society has been set up to actually make it look ridiculous. Nobody that I know believes in the idea that we're a disc flying through space upwards, right? No, so that's just craziness. So we start breaking that down and saying, yeah, we're not, we're not even in space. But see, that's the idea. They have these mental pictures, and they'll discard it. So for me, early on, I came up. I mean, I think in the global lie, 
I'm called an enclosed creationist, but I came up with that very early because, again, it was very intriguing. Because, well, like, I mean, you run into a lot of creationists as Christians, right? But what's an enclosed creationist? I'm intrigued. Explain. So then I can actually work my way into it rather than just hitting with it and say, you know what? I don't believe space is real. We're in a dome. We're in a snow globe. They're like, what? You're nuts. And they walk, you know, these type of terms. Oh, they laugh at that. They react. laugh at that, though. Yeah. They course, laugh at the whole snow globe course. thought. You would, too. They don't you understand two, it. Two years ago, if I, yeah, two years ago, if I called you up and I said, dude, you live in a snow globe, you'd be like, you're a moron. You know, you would have done the same right. thing. The question is, how is it approached? Is it someone that they really trust? That, you know, I find that most times people will actually be open to it when someone close to them says, no, no, dude, like, seriously? Yes. You yeah. should take a look at it. And that's, like, really? That's what happened. Like, that's Exactly. That's what happened. That's what brother. That is, but I'm saying that's how we combat this. It's all one person at a time. And I'm going to encourage anyone out there, whether you have a YouTube channel of like 50,000 subs or you have uh, three subs or you you just don't do anything and you just talk to people, understand that you just having that friendship and having that rapport with people, you can bring the subject matter up, but you don't have to bring it up in one night. You can bring this up over a six-month period. You can bring this up slowly. Make people question. Say, hey, is that weird? They say we went 240,000 miles away to the moon in the 1960s. And since then, the furthest that man has gone in any space you can see anywhere on Earth is 400 miles. So you're, you're, wait a minute, let's stop for a second. So we went a half a million miles in 1960, yet nobody has gone further than 400 miles since. Isn't that weird? I put that in scientism exposed. Oh. Why? Because oh, they destroyed. Go, wait a minute. Yeah, they go, wait a minute, that is weird. That is weird. But they, what is going on? Yeah. You, you, know what's, you know what's really weird? Let me, let me play this quick clip, Robbie talking about that right now. So that people understand how craziness this is and NASA is, they claim, now this is, I forget the guy's name, I should have probably wrote it down, but this is one of the, the people involved. But check this out. Talking about going to the moon, listen to this, okay? A question to yourself. Why would you destroy the technology? Here we go. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. But going to Mars should be uh, one of the next series of steps that humans do. The first step should be going back to the moon for a number of technical uh, reasons and exploration reasons and then after that Mars, maybe a high orbit in uh, Venus atmosphere, maybe going to Europa. There's all kinds of uh, targets. High orbit. Uh, oh, you know, let's destroy the technology, but, uh, but we're going to go to the Mars. But then he says again, oh, we're going to go back to the moon. So how much more money from funding of taxpayers do you want? Do, do you hear the craziness in that? Yeah, it gets it's crazy. It gets crazy. I mean, and there's so many. I mean, it'd be different if we were just taking one thing and people were saying, oh, maybe you're taking that out of context. But that's the thing is when you start looking, if you honestly start looking into this, you will find so many inconsistencies, so many lies, so much deception, and it's right in front of our face. I mean, they're admitting on the yep. ISS that they're building the technology and they're doing all this research to one day hopefully you know, go to the moon. They say that. They say that. The question is, they should have a hotel built. They should have a moon base. They should be taking tourists up there by now, back and forth every weekend. I mean, right. this is ridiculous. Yet people sit there and say, like, like uh, Obama said, oh, they asked him about the moon. He says, oh, we don't need to go to the moon uh, because uh, we've already been there. You know, this is a lot. Yeah. I run into people, and they tell me the reason why they haven't gone to the moon is they don't need to. They've already been there. I'm like, wait a minute. Stop for a second. You're telling me that when they went there in the 60s, they gathered, they did all the scientific research they needed to. They got all the moon rocks and they did all the, they have all this new equipment, yet they don't want to do any more scientific tests. Seriously. But people will seriously look at you and go, no, they don't need to go there. Why would they go to the moon? They already were there. I'm like, okay, fine. What about all those feminists that are marching, believing they can be, you know, anything? Why aren't they storming NASA and saying, we demand to have the first woman on the moon? Oh, that is a good point. Oh, because it ain't going to happen. You ain't going to get to the moon. <laughs> no, you know what? So they should be ticked well, off. Hey, why, how come a woman's not on the moon? We want a woman to walk on the moon. You know what? So feminists, anybody listening to a feminist, why don't you storm NASA and say you want to have put the first woman to be able to walk on the moon? And you know what? You can sit there for a while because all the rest of your arguments are nonsense. So at least go against someone that's completely lied to you and will never give you, will never, oh. ever give you the ability to walk on the moon. So here it is, feminist. No woman will ever walk on the moon because nobody can walk on lights. There is no walking on the moon. 
I say this all right. the time, but most people will say, yeah, I'm with you, bro. Or they'll say, you're crazy. Of course, they land on the moon. And that's why I say the moon is so pivotal. If you run into someone before you bring up this subject matter, ask them where they stand on the moon. So anyone listening to this program right now thinks we're nuts or whatever, hey, go start looking into the moon because the clip, you know what, that was played by AJ and the stuff that's being done. You need to look into these things because if there's inconsistencies and there's massive lies going on, and one of them is, come on, oh, yeah. 400 miles, all this technology, and the furthest they can go is 400 miles, and you think I'm making it up? Go do their own research yourself. Look it up, and you're going to go, that's weird. But, they can only go 400 miles. Yeah, they went a half of, they, sorry, they went a quarter of a million miles. No problem in an iPhone 3. The megahertz power in the Apollo was equivalent to, it was actually limited. An iPhone 3 has more megahertz power than the Apollo. Yes. So think about that. Yep. Think about the iPhone 3. All of our phones, most likely, that are listening to this show right now have more megahertz power in its processors than the Apollo. Yet it went a quarter of a million miles, and yet since then, the furthest that man can go in space in any agency around the world, it's 400. That is a fraction of a fraction of a percent. Something's going on. Start looking into yeah. it because I'll tell you, if you find oh something, my. it might change your entire worldview. Well, well, here's one. When you look at the uh, the size of the lander, the moon lander itself, and I forget what Apollo mission it was. I mean, maybe I should know this, but I laugh at it all. So it's like I don't want to you know clog my memory full of nonsense. I just go to Google real quick. But the one Apollo, I guess, it was the first one when they had their moon lander there, that little kind of like uh, you know RV looking thing or ATV looking thing. Mm-hmm. When you look mm-hmm. at the picture, you see footsteps going up to it but you don't see any tire tracks. Mm-hmm. Okay. But they're driving it around. <laughs> Come on. And where would they land? Where are they, 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 they sitting? They land the Apollo. There's no, there's no blast <laughs> site. There's no marks on the ground. I mean, we're talking. Right. And again, back in the 60s, they never thought there'd be the equipment and the sophistication with this technology to analyze the pictures, the data. Point. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker, though. All the telemetry data, all the data would verify that they could prove all things. NASA could shut all of us up in one second is produce all of the true data that was put there. Do you know that they, they, didn't, they won't release it? They lost it all. The official story is that they, they, just, no, they destroyed it. Well, they destroyed it. Is, yeah, yeah. There's different reports, but the fact is you understand that we're not talking a couple of reels. I'd heard it was a warehouse. I heard it was something like 12 rows of massive reels. And, I mean, if you actually look up the original footage of the actual data files of all of the telemetry data, you will find out that it is massive. It probably wouldn't fit in your house. You know, we're talking a lot, and yet it got lost or they destroyed it. Well, destroying, you know, the one thing I'd heard before was it, they had lost it. There are quotes out there that say, well, we lost it. We, we misplaced it. The other one, <laughs> okay. we destroyed it. But, okay, I would like to do a comedy show about the guy that his whole job, he wakes up every morning, and all his job is is he just has to protect those files. I mean, did that yeah. guy get fired? I mean, how did that guy funny. walk around? His only job was to protect the files of the greatest man, you know, the, the greatest feat in mankind's history. Right. All the data right. that would support them landing on the moon. And it had actually the data from the rover you're talking about driving around the buggy. It had all the data from the buggy, had the data from all the altitudes and stuff like this. All of it's gone. So here's the thing. People but, think we're crazy. The Mars. NASA destroys or loses all the data to shut us up. They can't shut us up because it never happened. It's all a lie. And, and, and the funny thing is, that guy states, oh, I'd, I'd go there you know, in a nanosecond. Uh, <laughs> Mars, yeah, you know, blah, 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 and the moon. Oh, we destroyed that, but we're, you know, we got to go there first. So, okay, hold on. So you have to redo everything that supposedly was done. And it's funny because, it, it, listen, Rob, you know this because you do the documentaries. Me and Sean know this, and me and Ninja know this because we do music. We have three sources of backup, okay? So if... The main computer goes down. I have, oh. matter, of, matter of fact, four sources for my music. Then that's not going to go away. NASA, the billion-dollar monster that it is, you mean to tell me that they didn't have any backups on their data? Oh. Give me a freaking break. But for this idiot to come out and say they're going to Mars, let me tell you something. Hey, listeners, if you think they went to Mars... Uh, Hello? Yeah, you're still here. We can hear you. You there, Robbie? Technical difficulties. Hold on. Let's see what's going on here in the studio. Robbie is still live. Hold on. Hey, Hey, brother, you there? there? 
Okay. I'm here. I lost. Yeah, you're saying hello. Head. Yeah, it might have oh, been myself. Oh, you could hear me. I couldn't wow. hear you at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was probably it just myself. Completely dead. Oh. <laughs> well, the it's problem, all good. It it's might all be good. Yeah, so, I mean, there's so many. Yeah, there's so many. There's so many inconsistencies, and that's the thing. It's just like not one or two. When you start looking into this, you find all of this you know, deception going on. And when you start looking into just, you know, and even get into the space agencies, I mean, people say, yeah, but what about SpaceX? And what about uh, Virgin Galactic? Virgin Galactic has right. been promising people in space flights and going all over the place early on. They keep saying, oh, yeah, two years from now, for sure. Like, you can actually go back and you can actually find where they're promising. They have got, I forget how many people, 400 people paying deposits way back in like 2004 or five, And yet they're like, yep, we're going to be operational doing space travel next year. Oh, next Next year, next year, and they keep prolonging yeah. and prolonging it. So now everyone's saying, "Oh no, they're they're going around the moon, uh, you know, next year." And oh, they're going off to Mars, you know, in 2030. Isn't that weird? They pick the day 2030. We're thinking of going back to Mars. Well, like, what's what's the deal? You know, as we get closer, they're going to say, "Oh, uh, we got into complications." 2055. You know, they will keep pushing no it one's and pushing it and pushing it. <laughs> no, exactly. It's just a bunch of nonsense. I mean, yeah, but again, but again, it's bigger than people will say, yeah, but why would they lie? Like, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't compute with people's minds. But when you understand that we live in a spiritual world, when you understand that Satan is the God mm-hmm. of this world, and you understand his agenda is not money, he can lure people with money. For example, he can go to artists and say, look, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world if you bow down to me, make, you know, riches and fame and sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever. That might be the lure. When he's done with you, he'll just basically take you out, you know, make you uh, hang yourself or something, right? But what I'm saying is there that's you go. the way Satan looks at it. He uses, he uses his people as puppets. But his agenda is not, you know, monetary. You know, his agenda is to complete, keep people away from the true creator, to keep people away from the truth, right. to keep people away. And that is his whole role with everything. His motive is, is nothing but completely to rob, steal, and destroy. And that is exactly what he is. He's the father of all lies. So when you understand the origins of NASA and you understand when you're getting into Jack Parsons, I mean, the guy was doing like freaking witch spells and stuff like this, right? You get into like, you know, all the people, even, you know, uh, Operation Paperclip, and you start getting into the occultic, you know, beginnings of NASA. You understand the mission statement of NASA. It is very antichrist. It is very New World Order. And again, whether you get Bill Nye or you get NASA or you get any government agency, you have to understand that the spiritual nature behind everything is one directional in the sense that not only getting people against God, but unified together in one world, you know, one economy, one, the whole agenda has been set. The Tower of Babel, everyone separated. Satan has been on a quest to gather everyone back together again, one worldview one system, one religion, one, you know what I mean? So he's completely putting all the pieces back together. But how much easier is it when everyone already has a, you know, a, a similar worldview because they trusted true science? He didn't have to even be, he didn't have to try hard at that one at all. He just needed to convince people it's reality. You, you can't argue science. There is no debate. You hear it all the time. The debate's over, right? There is no debate. Science is settled. The science is settled on vaccines. The science is settled on climate change. All of these things, the science is not settled. Do not listen to their lies. If anything, at least research it. And again, if this subject matters not, then research chemtrails, research global warming, research vaccinations, because these are the same guys that are at NASA saying the science is settled. You can't argue with 18 billion trillion light years away. We just saw gravity waves, you know, 21 billion years ago. I mean, I'm sorry. But how do you see things 21 billion years ago in the past? You have a time machine now, NASA? You know, we detected gravity waves, you know, 21 billion years ago, you know, in the past. And yet 21 billion years away. They love billions. You notice that? Evolution, yes. you know, the universe, yep. everything. is Because it's crazy. We can't get our head around those kind of numbers. Someone had said uh, the other day, they said, I don't know if your listeners know this, but how long, I'm going to ask you guys, how long, and don't Google it either, and nobody listening, Google it, just listen, how long would it take to count to a million? If you were just to go, <laughs> one a second, one a second, just one, two, three, like you can go each second. How long would it take to count to a million? And you guys know? It's 12 days. Okay, now I'm going to throw you off for a real loop here. It takes 12 oh. days to count to a million. Okay? How long to count to one billion? Good luck with that. 34 years. Wow. So you understand that we went from 12 days continually, right, to go to 1 billion 
which would be 34 years to count. So, again, they get into billions and trillions and zillions. And, you know, Carl Sagan with his billions, trillions, zillions, billions, trillions, zillions, you know. And they mess up our mind because these numbers are so crazy. We can't comprehend them. And all of a sudden, God became so distant. I mean, where is God? He's in some other yes. distant galaxy or he's beyond, you know. It's, even as Christians, it, it, it distanced God. I remember because I'm just like, well, you know, I couldn't really read the Bible. I was like, well, you know, nobody could understand that. What if it's so simplistic that God is above, you know, and that things are a lot closer? Why would God need to light the earth? Think of this one, too. Hey, you have a nice house. You say you have a room and you're going to light your room. Why do you need a light that's 18 billion times bigger than your room itself? I'm sorry, but we're humans, and we can light a room with a small light. So, for example, why do you need something that's like 3 million times the object that you're lighting. So to me, it makes right. more sense that God would use stuff that's closer and smaller, just like the Bible says, but yet, no, we will believe in lies that our light for our earth is that big. Oh, because you know why, though? It's more it intimate. Lights the whole universe. God. No, because it lights the whole universe. We need the whole universe lights, where, where the Bible says God only needed to light the earth, not the whole universe. Right. And, you know, and it, even you can play off the sun, too, when it comes to looking at this, because, you know, when the sun hits the water, water turns blue. Well, when the sun hits the sky, the sky's turning blue. So, um, hello, water. <laughs> but they want us to believe that's atmosphere. And, you know, when you look at these pictures of the sun, it's like, okay, so it's 93 million miles away. It's huge. It dwarfs Jupiter. And space is black. Yeah. <laughs> these are the questions. Yeah, man, you just made some amazing points right there. You are on fire, brother. I love it. I love it. So, talk about some of the, the, the your uh, documentaries that you've done. And the okay, the global lie is amazing. I have shared that, Robbie, with so many people. Same with scientism and the other one, the UFO deception, flat Earth early mm -hmm. uh, UFO deception mm -hmm. with the U. Uh, mm -hmm. That one is huge. You know, and, and it's funny because. When you, when you start watching these, if you watch a lot of movies, which I no longer do, but you, you expect Hollywood graphics and explosions and this huge storyline to come out. No, it's not going to happen. You know that maybe you've got to shut your eyes for a second and take in truth and take in facts. Let that grow your mind. You, you do have effects in there. You, you, know, you, you guys do a great job of that, but it's like people like watch, they, they well, their programs, they expect to watch some documentaries and just be just blown away by the visual effects. No, mm -hmm. it's not about the visual effects. It's about the message. It's about mm -hmm. the message. So talk about the documentaries you, know, you were behind with Celebrate Truth. I mean, yeah, so, I mean scientists and exposed the global yeah, lie. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And I have, like, uh, I've got the one with the Big Bang evolutionary lie. I've got the one with climate change lie and global warming hoax. Um, I've done quite a few, um, but yeah, the biggest ones, the ones you mentioned most recently would be Scientism Exposed. I am working on Scientism Exposed 2 that will come out this November, uh, and we'll talk more about where that's debuting here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to me, it was important um, to have this subject matter, to take it serious, to come out with something of excellence, something that was put together, you know, and to me, I just want to keep improving my craft. But when it comes to, you know, the documentaries, putting them together, getting the truth out there, it had a lot of people to that they really took this subject a lot more serious when they saw um, how well the uh, the films were put together, that they were done right. professional. Uh, Scientism Exposed was the first one I ever did actually put to. It's my first major release on DVD. Um, so that was very exciting for me, and it will be part of a trilogy. So there will be Scientism Exposed 1, 2, and 3, so it will come yes. in a box nice. set. But I, had, I put it also, when I released it in November of last year, I had put it up and I released it on DVD and YouTube for free on the same day because for me it was like I didn't want anything to hinder people um, from, you know, seeing it. So it's been a fantastic response. There have been so many people that have been ordering multiple copies. There's people that are putting them in libraries. There's people that are giving them to the church <coughs> libraries, you know, or giving it to someone that maybe won't go to YouTube and watch a two-hour video, but if a DVD is sitting on their coffee table, you know, they'll right. throw it in, right? You know, so let, let, me, let, yeah. let, let, me quick hit, let me quick hit that point. Because, uh, listeners, you need to understand something here. You, now let me ask you a question, okay? And let me, let, just, all I need is a yes or no, okay? Because I want to, let me, I got to deliver this message to the listeners out there. You personally released Scientism Exposed, okay? 
on Celebrate Truth, your YouTube channel. You literally uploaded that whole documentary, correct? Correct. Okay. Listeners, did you hear that? This man right here cares more about truth than money. He put all the time and effort. Matter of fact, every one of your documentaries are on YouTube. But hold on a minute. I can go to YouTube. I don't have to subscribe to that. Um, I can go to YouTube. You, everybody can go to YouTube and watch this. So it's not like you're out here for the money. The fact of the matter is, God is on your heart. Truth is on your heart. Like all of us here, none of us are getting paid at this network. I don't get paid for my music. Ninja doesn't get paid for his music. We care that much about humanity and truth. We do things for free. So, you, you're going to put out a trilogy, and I'm sure people can get that DVD. Like you said, it's, it's a lot easier for people to pop in the DVD because it's like, hey, look what I got. You know, grab some popcorn rather than going to YouTube. Mm-hmm. And, and, mm-hmm. And, and also, a lot of people don't have TVs like I got. I got the, the Wi-Fi hookup with my TV where I can just go to YouTube. I have an app for YouTube, and I can watch documentaries, which I do. But a lot of people mm-hmm. don't have that option. So DVD is a necessity. So... To you people out there, if you want to support this man, buy the DVDs. I mean, you can always go to YouTube and, and be, you know, get the truth, but support him. If you are seeing yeah, what's I mean, going on, you're starting yeah, to wake up. Yeah, it is optional. I mean, it's it takes money. CelebrateTruth.org. Um, but again, it, people are using it for so many different ways, like maybe they have a loved one or their grandparents or they want to, you know, so there, we have them on bulk order as well, too. But that's the whole idea. I mean, a lot of people, I was in a majority of people watching on YouTube and then want to buy a DVD. So that's the whole beautiful thing about it is, like, you can try before you buy sort of thing. You know, but you get anything, you know, that's that's, that's beautiful right there. There's different type of people out there. And, you know, I appreciate people supporting by sharing it, you know, getting the word out, recommending their friends. If you think it's good content, yeah, this is wonderful. These are all ways to support. Even supporting me perfectly is very important. Because, again, I am in a spiritual battle. Anyone that is basically on fighting for the truth, especially in the spiritual war that we're in, we all value the truth. So, again, that is all precious to me and very important. And, again, with Celebrate Truth, I wanted to make sure that people could understand this but also understand the ultimate truth found in Jesus. And, again, to me, that's the most important, and it will always be. Um, so, again, I will and, be and that, and that's- uh, coming out with Scientism Exposed too. In November, I can't wait for that. It will be premiering. Yeah, it's going to be premiering at FEIC. So I guess we have a few minutes left. So oh, FEIC. yeah, we're going to talk about that. But I'm going to tell you something that is so admirable. You put so much time and effort into these things, and you upload them to YouTube. Hey, there's the truth, people. Come take a look. You know, and and I, don't get me wrong. A lot of time and effort goes in. Like I played my song Pawns during the commercial break. I can't tell you how many guitar tracks I laid down on that. Like, playing that song live, I'm going to need, like, myself playing guitar and then, like, two other people. Because I took time and effort, my God-given talents and ability to really deliver a good product about the music industry. You're doing the same thing about the truth of this world. And, hey, here it is on YouTube. So it's like, you know, because we know at the end of the day when we die, we're not taking worldly riches to heaven. We care more about waking people up, bringing them to God, than monetary reasons. So that separates the independent Christian artists, or even independent artists, from the mainstream, or as I call the lamestream. And Robbie, that is awesome. I think that is so admirable in you that you do that, but you offer the DVD, which is cool because once you get inspired, hey, let me buy this DVD and hand it out to someone. Yo, check this out. Yeah, You've got to yeah. watch this. No. And that's great. Yeah, that's great. And there are Real people quick. that will buy it just to support, and that's awesome, too. Real quick. Hey, Ninja. Real quick. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, just check it out. I just had, y'all know I'm driving people around to work and whatever, all over the place. And uh, I had a lady in the back of the car listening to the show. She said she wants a DVD. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, you know, I said, you know what they're talking about, right? She said, yeah. I said, they're talking about the earth being flat. I said, you know the earth is flat. She said, it is. I said, the earth is flat. We're not spinning. I said, and she's a, she's a, a Catholic, so she has some roots in Christianity. You know what I mean? So I'm like, the Bible says it's flat. It says it in the Bible. It talks about the earth not moving and being 
you know, still in order, and and uh, cannot be moved, and and the sun revolving and the earth, uh, the sun revolving around the earth. We don't revolve around the sun, and when that's been, I so I went to the whole thing. She was like, I gotta, I gotta watch this DVD. We got uh, hold on, hold, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Um, two things, real quick, Robbie. After, let me let me say this one thing, and you got to plug where this woman can find it. Um, I just want to well, say I, something about she's not gonna be the Catholic. I gotta Hold get on. it for her because I gotta get it for her because she don't have no computer. She got a uh, one of uh, okay. Obama flip phones. So I'll get it yeah. for her. I want to say one thing, something real quick. There are Catholic flat Earth groups out there. I know a woman named Basha, and she is hardcore flat Earth. And she ain't Vatican too. She knows what's going on with the Pope and Vatican going on now. Like she knows that Jesus Christ is our Savior, and she's a flat earther, like hardcore. And it was funny because I was talking about her with the term of flat earth, and I go, I hate using that term. She goes, I love it because it just gets people so whacked out. She's like, I want them to get upset so we can spin, you know, get their head going and get them engaged properly. I want them upset because it upsets people. But she is straight up. As, as when it comes to Christian belief, she is a Christian, but yes, yeah, she is also a Catholic. But they, she has made it a point to actually step out in the church and start to Robbie, I'll tell you something. She sent a bunch of priests, Scientism Exposed. That's right. You were telling me that. That's awesome. Yes, yeah. I, I did tell Let you that. Ask, I'm glad, hold on real quick. I'm glad, I'm going to ask Robbie a question. Have you heard mm-hmm. any, like, you were talking about like, giving out the DVDs and stuff earlier. If we were to give them out to churches, like, what kind of response do you think the churches? I already know what I'm going to put out my answer. I don't want to hear your answer. What kind of response to tell you the do truth, you think that churches would give? Because, yeah, actually, it's been, it's been very positive. Scientism Exposed, actually, for anyone listening, Scientism Exposed does not mention Flat Earth even once. Now, I'm not saying the entire series won't, but the idea was to present Flat Earth or enclosed cosmology or get people understanding that they can actually trust the Bible every word it says, and maybe go against scientism, is there a way to do it without even mentioning those two words? So it opened it up to a lot more people. And quite honestly, it has. There is a lot of people that have been woken up to look into NASA more, that want to look into other forms of science that they believe were scientific when they go, well, wait a minute, yeah, something's up there. So it really opens the door to a lot. Because again, we're not talking about Flat Earth, you know, 401. This is not even Flat Earth 101. This is before you even start your research on the flat earth. This is what piques the interest. This is what kind of gives you that spark. It's almost like, you know, when you have a spark and from there you can fan the flame. This is like if one spark is created through scientists and exposed, then they're like, well, if they lied about that, maybe they did lie about this. And maybe they did. It will open up their entire worldview going, wow. You know, even if it's evolution, some people have actually watched it and have been blown away by the evolution portion of it, because it's not all about cosmology. Right. It actually goes into evolution. And when I do scientism exposed to, I'm going to be it's touching brilliant. climate change and vaccination. So I'm going to have a bit on vaccination and climate change. And in part three, I'm going to have a couple of other forms of scientism. So what I'm trying to show is this whole scientism is not just about, you know, lying to us about the earth and the cosmos. They're lying to us about what they're spraying. They're lying to us about what they're injecting. Yes. They're lying to us about what they say that we need to pay carbon tax for unless we're going to kill Mother yes. Earth. You know, all this stuff is a nonstop, you know, new age satanic lie. And again, that's what I try to address. So, yeah, actually, Scientism Exposed is the type of show you would give to someone because if they watch it, they won't even know it's about flat Earth. But yet they'll go, wait a minute. I'm going to look into that moon thing a little bit more. I'm going to look into uh, yep. that Darwin That's stuff. So, you know? slick. so even if they I start love getting it. skeptical in one of those areas, they start going for more. And again, if they if they love scientism exposed, then two will come out. They want to watch the sequel, and then they're going to want to watch the prequel. So again, the box series is set up that they if they get hooked on the first one, they go, I want to know more. I, I'm I, I'm I'm hungry now. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to give more meat, more meat. And by the time they're done scientism exposed, I think they're ready to completely go out and say, I really want to go and research this because I'm, you know, my curiosity is peaked. Uh, something sparked, and I want to know the truth. Hey, hey, we're down to question. about. Let me ask one more Real question. Quick, Ninja, we got about nine Real minutes quick, left of quick. live time. I see. Okay, I'll go for it. Uh, yeah, last question. Um, do you think that the church will be open to talking about the earth being flat? You know, because a lot of stuff in no. church, they don't talk about, you know? What's your opinion? Yeah, no, no. 
They won't. They won't. And that's why I'm saying you've got to start with scientism. You've got to start with evolution. You've got to start with, like, you know, what's going on. I mean, are you t- – I mean, a church, if, are they seven-day literal creationists? Do they believe in evolution? I mean, you have to find a starting point. But, again, no. If you bring up flat earth, they'll probably boot you out of the church. Unfortunately, <laughs> like, you're at a point where they're, they're acting the same way. You've got to kind of do this. You know, is, you know how the Bible says that we have to be gentle as doves but wise as serpents? Yes. We've got to basically do this, understanding that basically there's so much indoctrination, so much programming. We can't take it personal. We have to take it as a mission to at least give them the benefit of the doubt to get them to a point that if they're questioning all this, then it's just another step to go a little further. But if you mention, hey, dude, I think the earth is flat and we've been lied to about the spinning ball, they'll think you're crazy. They'll think you're absolutely crazy yeah. nine times out of ten. Yeah. I agree. Well, hey, we, 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 and, and unfortunately, that is a fact. Uh, I mean, we are up against It is evil. right now, and that's why be real. Exposed, I think will be a good tool for people to actually get into yes, someone's hands I've that used will it. help them on their journey. And, and, and I love that because all of us, God has given us, he's putting something in our hearts. He has given us talents and abilities. And, Robbie, you're behind Celebrate Truth. You're behind um, FEIC, which, uh, hold on, time check, we have a, a little over five minutes left. But he's given us, uh, God gives us talents and abilities, and we all use them. You know, I'm a musician, Ninja's a musician, you're doing documentaries, you do speaking engagements. Real quick, um, we have about eight minutes left in live air. Mm-hmm. Tell us about what's coming in November. Okay, well, we're talking about Scientism Exposed, and I'll be, I'll be premiering the of Scientism Exposed at FEIC. And what FEIC is, is Flat Earth International Conference. 500 years in the making, and it's finally going to happen. The first flat earth international conference will be in Raleigh, North Carolina, November 9th and 10th. And we've got an amazing lineup. We've got Rob Skiba, ODD TV. We've got Patricia Steer, Mark Sargent, Jaron Campanella um, from Jaronism. We've got Bob Nodell from Globebusters. We've got Dan Christopoulos from Ordell, Glenn Mullen from Force the Line, myself. Emmanuel Lacongo from the Controversy 7. He just passed 100,000 subs uh, about a month ago. Um, we have Richard Hopkins, Mr. Thrive and Survive, and Amy Denise, and Carly Medrano. I believe she was on your show. Um, yes. The previous one on Flat Earth. So, yeah, so it, it's, a, yep. it's an amazing lineup, and we're really excited. Like I said, this is the first time this has ever we're, happened. We're getting people. everyone together. We're going to be talking about all sorts of things. And, again, this cool thing is we're talking about people coming from different backgrounds, where can people yeah, find this? We're doing sessions on the Bible. And most you know, people are going to have an understanding, and what an amazing thing for people to be excited and want to investigate you know, God's true creation and getting in there. But I'll let all your listeners know that we, and this is the first time I've ever announced this. I actually just updated the website today. But if you go to fe2017.com, you can find all the information. We have 76 we tickets left, and it will be sold out. So in 76 tickets are left, and once it's gone, that is it. It's completely sold out. There will be no more tickets for the first year. Next year, we'll probably go with a uh, larger venue and stuff. But, again, there is 76 tickets left. So if you're interested, it's in Raleigh, North Carolina, November 9th and 10th. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun. My channel is Celebrate Truth. You can find it on YouTube. You can just either Google Celebrate Truth. Or if you go to youtube.com slash celebrate truth and um, my website where you, if you're interested in the DVD or you want to get uh, bulk copies, we have them on as low as four ninety nine a DVD. If you want tons to hand out or whatever, we want to try to make it as low as possible because we understand that it's important to get the truth. And again, people respond to DVDs. There's a lot of people that respond yes. differently. So, but watch it first, preview it and think, is, is that good to give to your wife? Is that good to give to your uncle or your friends or whatever? You decide for yourself. You can watch, it. Watch it on YouTube. Just type in Scientism Exposed. Um, you can add me on Facebook. I'm Robbie Davidson. You should be able to find me. And uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate being on the show. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to do before wrapping up, but I, hey, uh, uh, I appreciate it. And yeah. Yeah. Thanks for blasting all that out there. I was going to ask you that, like, you know, give everybody you know, where they can find you. Um, we are almost at the top of the hour. We do have a caller, about four minutes left in live air. Sure. I really don't want to give to too far into overtime because i got to be up at 3.30, and which <laughs> was in a couple hours. Um, are you willing to take a call? Sure, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's take it. Let's take a call. Yeah, we have 540. Now, I'm going I'm to make a statement right now. 
This show, as I posted, is not a debate. I don't want to hear, have someone come in the show and want to debate and, uh, you know, spin you it. You ain't going to troll <laughs> this show, man. You're not trolling. You ain't trolling this show. Exactly. So, all right, well, let, let, let me formally wrap this up. Um, and then, well, in four minutes, we're going into over, well, three minutes, we're going into overtime. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning into the new element. On Infinite Source Broadcast Network. Well, you can find us right here on blogtalkradio.com, side slash Infinite Source. You can also find us on YouTube. And you can also find us on Facebook. Um, Robbie Davison gave us all his info. This show will be uploaded to YouTube very shortly. So you can go back and listen to it again and, and by all means, share it. And get involved in what they're doing on Celebrate Truth. Go to YouTube, type in Celebrate Truth, and boom. There, there is so much good stuff on there. We, hey, we didn't even get to talk about the Flat Earth Society and the craziness that they talk and how not to, you know, don't don't attack someone did. who we believes. Nobody, in nobody that I know, I've been in this for a while. Nobody I know believes in what the Flat Earth Society believes as far as some of their mis, uh, misinformation, disinformation. Yeah, I don't. There, and well, of course, Obama's going to say we don't have time for the Flat Earth Society. And I actually have that audio clip in here. I didn't. <laughs> I was going to play it, but, you know, it's just, it's once again, you got to, like, look at what they're trying to discredit, but at the same time propping up. They want people to look into the Flat Earth Society because it discredits the real Flat Earth movement. So, um, I'm trying to think of some more. Okay, tomorrow night, Friday night, tune back in here with, um, hosted by um, Ashley and Jessica. We have the show coming up um, straight, straight out of captivity. And then Saturday, sorry, we will not be doing 215 Live because I will be down in Philly at the March Against Monsanto. And then back Monday night, might be a, a simulcast, but Tuesday, Our Reality, Wednesday, Question Everything with Jimmy Gray. Thursday, of course, The New Element. Friday, once again, Straight Out of Captivity with Ashley and Jessica. And Saturday, next, the, well, the following week, will be 215 Live. And uh, I'm trying to think of some other announcements real quick. Um, Tune into the Gateway Radio Network with Michael Conley. He used to be a host here. That's kind of our sister network. Um, give them some props. Tune in. And we are going to take this caller. I just want to thank everyone for calling in. Robbie Davidson, thank you so much for your time and what you're doing. Um, God bless everyone out there. Fight for truth and also seek truth. And in that, we're about ready to go into overtime. I'm going to bring in 540. You are live. On the new element. Five four zero, welcome. Dennis Renegade, Lee. I told you to write my number down. You haven't done that I yet. I got you. No, I no, I can do my dude. phone. We know this guy, man. We know him. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> but yeah, um, I want to point out something real quick. I got a couple points to make, just just to recap. You know, it won't take long. But um, wow, what an amazing show here tonight, Renegade and Ninja and and Robbie, man. I mean, you guys. This is essentially what you want to do when when it comes to radio. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not about it's not about uh, uh, likes and everything. But my personal opinion, you know, this was very very interesting radio here tonight. This was, you know, that's what you want. You know, that's that's all I'm saying. And hopefully, people out there that tuned into the show here tonight, they can um, digest all that for themselves. I, there was people even when you posted the link to the show, you know, your your promo, people were like, hopefully this will be available. You know, the, the audio will be available. Trust me, it will be available here as soon as we end the show. The archive will be up. But um, also, Robbie, I think I'm friends with you on Facebook, man. I'm not 100% sure on that. But, um, you know, this is Dennis Ford. I was just uh, blown away by what you were saying earlier in the first hour. And you brought up a good point, too. When it comes to the flat earth, uh, the whole flat earth thing, you know, I kind of set out to debunk it myself. I was like, this can't be real. There's no, no way, no way this could be an actual, you know, a reality. But as I'm doing my research, much like everything else that I've done, being looking into things, this is, you know, I can't really, uh, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to believe in myself. And that's where a lot of people come from. Uh, you mentioned, you know, ODD TV and, you know, even Payday Monsanto. These are highly intelligent people. All of us are highly intelligent people. Trust me. <laughs> And if we can't disprove what the government and NASA is telling us, then, you know what I'm saying, there's something to it. And I, I, like I said, mm -hmm. I brought this up earlier, um, you know, a certain 
I called in last week on this show, the part one. But like I said, I didn't get into that. That was just something that I did. You know what I'm saying? When I find a subject that is, you know, it, you know, it's I keep seeing it in my news feed or I keep seeing people talk about it on YouTube and, and things are popping up. I look into it. It's and next I said, level, brother. Debunk. Yeah, I it's said out to level. debunk this. You know, I went out and I was like, this is this is outrageous. There's no way, you know, because, again, I was indoctrinated since since, uh, you know, since I was in grade school. You know, that this is just the way the earth is and this is what's going on. And then I looked into it and I was like, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on. Pause. I got to hit the pause button. But, yeah, like I said, and it's an ongoing research thing, too. That's another point that I wanted to point out. You know, you're not going to – this topic takes some time. This is not like uh, vaccines or chemtrails yeah, yeah. or fluoride in the water. I mean, this is going to take some time uh, for people well, to, to digest your, it. Uh, yeah, I appreciate your uh, feedback, and uh, you have to understand that all of us that understand this, what a responsibility we have. Do you understand? Have you ever stopped and thought what kind of responsible, you know, how responsible you have to be with this information? Because, again, yes, we have to get it out there, but we can't just do it carelessly. We can't just do it like we have to look at everyone and treat them very carefully because this is just, I mean, life-changing. This is a very, very big thing. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Strange. I mean, it's not kind of, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, as soon as you put, I mean, I, I understand you know this because you were talking about this earlier, and Renegade knows this, and Ninja Scroll. You know, when you bring this subject up to uh, even people in your close inner circle, your family members, people, you know, that you really care about, that you really, you know, I always get that. People even, are, even, even supposed to friends on Facebook that are awake. Exactly. When you bring this Renegade, up, I want to bring this plan. I want to bring this up because we did this show. You know, I was listening to this show last night that Austin did, and, you know, Austin was like, you know, doing his thing, you know, kicking the science and everything else. It, you know, and I'm like, Austin, you're an intelligent person, you know what I'm saying? But, again, I, I don't know if he's really looked into this. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if he's really taken the, taking the time to look into this I because actually, he'll come to I, what we understand. I actually didn't. And he's not I the biggest him, Christian I, out there. No, but I, I, left, I left Daryl a message where we messed up when Austin went and talked about the vacuum. Well, how do people – I don't care what kind of active activity or research they do here on where we live when it comes to creating a vacuum and dropping a bowling ball and a feather. What we should stop them at was the fact of – the matter is no one's been to space, so how do you know there's even a vacuum there? So that, that right there, that study that they did to prove gravity – um, sorry, it's 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 getting thrown out the window because they've never been to space. They can't prove it's a vacuum. But if you if you really look at the pictures, um, even stars, Robbie, you know this. When you look at stars, they have this constant glistening, like you're looking at something in a swimming pool. That's looking through water. So when it comes down to that whole vacuum test, sorry, inconclusive, throw it out the window because whether you can stage it or do it in a, a, a closed environment here in this world, you ain't getting into space to prove it's a vacuum. You're not getting well, there. That, uh, Renegade, I want to point out something real quick, too. When I was listening to that show, you know, Austin was an approach. He was approaching it as, again, the scientism. Oh, well, science says this. And you're wrong. And right. That's science, and I know science. Well, that's great. Well, here's the point, right? If we know everything is a lie, and that's another point that was brought up in the show. Well, if NASA lies about yes. majority of what they're talking about, then obviously they're lying about this. And Austin, you know, I respect him highly. I mean, he's somebody that's actually influenced Same what here. I do. Love him. I love him. And we've, we've known him for years, uh, Renegade. Like I said, we've done shows together. We've been partners on networks and everything else. And I don't want this particular issue to draw a wedge between us. But like I said, as soon as you called in and Daryl called in, he was like, oh, we got the flat earthers. Oh, the yep. flat earthers are calling yeah. in. Oh, yep. Put the title on them. Put yeah, the title on them. Because yep. it's all funny, let's right? Laugh. This is all a joke, right? This is this is hilarious to all of us, right? Now, this, this is very funny, this right? Is, this is an unraveling. And, Robbie, I, see, I, I was talking about this last week on uh, the Flat Earth Testimonies Part 1. And we did also did a show on Friday night with Daryl Marble, who has done some great experiments. Uh, did you see the level testing he did on the airplane? Yeah, I did. I just saw a video. I saw a video on that or something. Brilliant, and, and people are starting to do these things more and more to prove the fact that there's no curvature. We're not spinning, and a matter of fact, I was was talking with him, and the whole Star Trail thing. 
Oh, well, they spin counterclockwise in the north and spin clockwise in the south. Well, there's, there is a reason for that. But is it true? You know, we're trying to get people linked up, around, you know, within this world to say, no, that's false. Sorry, hey, it's, it's you know, 5 o'clock here, and it's blah, blah, blah time here, and I'm, I'm seeing the moon. Well, how can you see the moon if I'm here? If I'm here in Pennsylvania and I'm looking at the moon just coming over the horizon, you mean to tell me you're over here, way over here in Australia, and you're seeing the moon too? Well, that's not I did. possible I was on the on the globe. With my family in New Zealand. I was on New Zealand, and someone was in New Jersey, and we saw the moon at the same time. I was in New Zealand with family. He was in. Uh, he was actually in uh, Baltimore. Anyways, he was at a studio, and, I, and he goes, uh, can you see the moon? He goes, just a sec, I'll go down. And he goes, looks out his window, and he sent me a picture. I sent him a picture. We both saw the moon from New Zealand and Baltimore, America. And you start looking on a globe, that is impossible. What, are we seeing a transparent globe? Impossible. Are we seeing through the globe? I mean, it's impossible. It's impossible. You, can't, you cannot see the moon in New Zealand and in Baltimore, America. Yeah. But I, we did it. We did it. And sure enough, it was there. He sent me the picture live at the timestamp, and I did it as well. And we were like, dude, are you seeing nice. this? I'm like, yeah. So sometimes, yeah, that's nice. sometimes too. we need that. You know, like we're like Thomas, we need, to, we need to stick the finger in. And, again, some people are like that. They need to actually touch or They need to actually – and that's what's so beautiful about this. We're not just talking all nonsense. Go out and apply the scientific method, and it will stun you yes. when you're like, whoa, I can't find any measured curvature. Try to do an experiment to prove that we're spinning. You do it, you'll be the most famous person on Earth. So anyone listening that wants to debunk this, <laughs> if, you find a scientist, if you find a scientific experiment to debunk this, you will be the biggest celebrity in the world. So if you want riches and fame, go out and, and make yeah, yeah. a scientific Absolutely. experiment to prove like this. Absolutely. I just want to point mean, this out, too. I just want to point this out, too. Rob, Rob, you mean I can hang with Bill Nye? The shill guy and and, and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I can hang with these idiots. They get paid to do hey, hey, guys, what they guys, do. Guys, think of this. Think of this. All the scientific world. If that is the best they have to offer for all the interviews and to debunk us, seriously, you got to ask yourself the question. It almost makes you scratch your head and go, something weird's going on when the world's wisdom is basically put into two major celebrity guys. One's not even a scientist. One's a clown, you know? And then you've got, yep. you got to just stop and say, wait a minute, these guys aren't even applying science anymore. These guys are just dropping mics on stage, calling people losers, yeah. and yeah. they're all, I have to feel like a science guy, and i got a new show on Netflix, and I'm going to save the world. I'm your new savior. We've got to really start questioning this and going, wait a minute, even if this was a respectable, you know, if this was a respectable discipline and they were truly trying to actually debunk this and show the world how credible it is, they would bring some very sophisticated people that were serious and they would apply it and it would be case shut. But we've got Bill Nye and we've got, seriously, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Are you kidding me? These guys are clowns. And yet it's weird. It's almost like, really, that's the best the world's going to give us they to get, say that we're wrong? Yeah, that's, that's they, the same thing with politics. shills. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to get into politics either, but that's the same thing with politics. They they give you these two people, and that's the best they got. And we just went through this with the last election. But here's another thing I want to point out real quick that you guys were touching on earlier. Yeah, we understand that, you know, Satan controls this world. And this is kind of crazy, divine intervention, because I was just sitting down. You know, I don't watch TV that much. I, I'm not a big fan of television in general. But Fox is running this show called Lucifer. You know, I think it's like yep. season two or something. Renegade, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. I've this actually been watching I called, it to keep, to keep tabs on what they're doing. Yeah, this episode I caught yesterday, or whenever it aired, I guess it was uh, Tuesday night or something. Ironically, yeah. in the episode, God showed up, right? God was in the episode, and Lucifer was like, oh, my father. Blah, blah, blah. And the whole episode was him being angry at God, right? And that's the whole episode. It's just like him, you sent me to hell. You did this to me. You you know, it's just it's just like the the same things that we're dealing with in the modern day society it's it's almost uh repetitive at this point. Especially if you're aware and awake. But like I said, they, they do this show and they call it Lucifer and he's he's very um popular amongst people. I mean he can say the right things at the right times, but as soon as God shows up in the episode, everything is a wrench thrown in the spokes, you know. <laughs> oh <laughs> God's here. Yeah, but even Let's that even God that calling for everything. Father. It's, even it's that God's fault. Yeah, they called him his father. And actually that's his mother lie. was like... They, uh, yeah, so they even distort that. They even distort that. You know what I mean? So they'll bring truth, but they'll mix it with lies. Where You know, it's like angels. When you see all these female angels. Find me a female angel in the Bible. 
You don't. You, you never see a you know a female gender angel anywhere in the Bible. They're all masculine gendered, right? But again, these are the things. Yeah, they went to a commercial break. Angels. I want to point this out too. They went to a commercial break where Lucifer punched God in the face. You know, a nice looking guy. You know that they cast as God. He punched him in the face because he was so angry. His eyes were turning red. You know. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. That's, that's amazing. Crazy. And again, that's a whole duality. That's like that's like Satan is bad, God is good. But understand they're not even equals. He's a created being. God is not created, right? So that's another illusion where they give you this basically like, you know, yin yang, we give evil and good. And we think that they're who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? But the reality is Satan, Lucifer is a created being. He's not even close to being polar opposite to God. He's created being, you know? So Well this ties into lie. everything too. The world. Yeah. Well they, 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 they say the New Age even went in, the New Age movement even went as far as to say that Lucifer is God. Right. Yeah. That's the and, funny and, thing. Not to intervene yeah, here, but I just want to point this out. You know what I'm saying? The quote earlier that Renegade was talking about: "There's nothing new under the sun." We all knew this was coming, right? Everything that's right is wrong, and everything that's wrong is right and promoted in society. That's biblical. This is how you which, you know, Renegade. We've done multiple shows about this. This is how you achieve. Your dreams, you know, you have to be. Yeah, you're renegade. renegade is you not gonna are make your own god. Yeah, renegade is not going to make it in the, main, in the mainstream music industry. Neither is Ninja Scroll, or neither is any of these other people out here that are promoting truth and their music. They're not going to make it in the music industry because they don't sell lies. And if, if that's another thing, follow the money. If you want to see the biggest lies in the world, follow the money. And that's what Renegade was talking about earlier with NASA, with taxpayer <laughs> taxpayer money funding oh. lies and BS. Follow the money, and it goes all through D.C. and everything else. But like I said, you know, you know, we, we you, know, you know what, you know what, too, you know what too, though? Attached to this whole thing, follow the money, is the deception that these people are trying yeah. to pull, their grand scheme. And, and, Robbie, I want you to talk about the documentary you guys got going on. You got going on, Celebrate Truth, the UFO alien deception of Flat Earth. Yeah, I mean, it comes down, I think most, I think most Christians – that have really researched the matter still understand that they're not extraterrestrial, they're interdimensional. They're, they're spiritual. They're demons, right? I mean, this is the, they, right. I mean, they can come and masquerade in different shapes and forms. And they used to come Alex and Jones is actually on this. People would bow and worship them. Yeah, people would Alex bow Jones and worship Alex Jones is actually them. on this because he smoked a joint, he smoked a joint and drank some, some whiskey on Joe Rogan's show, and he was talking about 12 dimensions that we actually are living in. And this is coming yeah. from Alex yeah. Jones, right? The guy that just lost his children in a custody battle because he's yeah. Playing a character, and that's, <laughs> but and, and that's why I, I digress. It, and that's why I look at it. And that's why I look at it now, though. I, I always say I don't believe that that flat Earth is the great deception. What I say to people is, could it be that our worldview, scientism, could make the great deception more easy to believe? For example, right. if we're told that you know alien beings have come from other you know planets in the universe, and NASA confirms it, and scientism confirms it, the whole world will embrace it. So what I'm saying is, exactly. is the deception come based on a scientific worldview. I don't believe that this, this lie is a great deception, but I believe it's part to make it easier to believe, that you will actually embrace it easier based on the fact that you haven't shared your worldly, you know, your worldview based on what scientism and Satanism have merged together as truth and reality. They've told you there's 18 trillion Earth-like planets. They painted they illusions, like right? man. They painted yeah, illusions. It's all lies. It's all lies. It's all lies. And unfortunately, it says yeah. God will send them a great delusion. So that they would rather believe a lie, right? So this is this yes. is basically humanity. This is what they want. And unfortunately, the Bible says that they are blinded by the God of this world. It says that they're blinded. It's a spiritual battle. And we need to pray for these people, and we need to pray earnestly for them to say, God, open their eyes, man. They need the truth and stuff. Because it's spiritual. It's not like, it's not common sense. Like, the minute we start saying, dude, are you dumb? Like, seriously, it's right in front of you. Be careful with that, man, because this is a supernatural. Yeah. Is your wake-up supernatural, or is it because you're so smart and your neighbor's stupid? So for me, it's like the gospel, man. God is the one that does this, and I, I think that we have the power through prayer to really, you know, and again, if it's our brother and sister in Christ, we can urge them and love them. We can have debates, and but we, we don't separate and have anything to us. You were talking about other people that you guys know. Don't allow this issue to divide because Satan will win if he can divide you over these issues. Because well, again, let me ask you something. Good point. Good point. You're still Good family. Point. family, man. Don't allow this to divide. Don't allow it to divide. I just have a question here because I, I, I know I know we don't have much time here, but I just want to ask Robbie and AJ and maybe even if Ninja Scroll is there. A lot of times uh, when it comes to this particular topic, 
you know, I brought this up last week. It's like I've known atheists that have looked into this, and it brought them to the Bible, and it brought them to Jesus. Yes. But a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people will not even entertain this subject because their head will explode. So that's my question is, you know, I, I understand that the Christian community is going to get that. If you're a fundamental, you know, Bible reading Christian, you're going to kind of understand this concept. But not everybody is on that level. So, yeah, we do have to plant seeds. But, again, it's not really a question. Well, but do, do, you, do, you hear something, do you want to hear something funny on that, Danny? I know right. someone through Facebook. Now, I'm not friends with them. I, I know this person because I've seen them posting. This person is a Satanist, a tranny, but is a flat earther. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't make sense in my mind, but and they, they see the lies that are going on. And this my, comes my, back down to not alienating people. Hey, you know, evidently somewhere along the line, someone said, hey, you need to look at, look at this. You know, whether it's been, you know, scientism exposed or, you know, the global lie, Yes, they claim to be a Satanist and a, and a tranny, but they still know the truth of the earth. This is where, right. as Jesus would do, don't judge people. That's not our job. Just present truth. You know, show love. And right, that that reminds me of a you know again. Don't hate, don't hate the person, quote. hate the sin. Katie Monsanto again. Uh, when when Robbie said that they had you know ODD TV being at this this thing coming up. It reminds me of these songs that Payday did because I was getting messages. People were like, what's up with your boy? You know what I'm saying? Flat Earth is crazy. That just credits everything he's ever done in his entire music career. Because same thing with you, Renegade. People are like, oh, well, you know, AJ done jumped the shark. You know? <laughs> he thinks the <laughs> earth's flat. You know? No, I so just woke just, up more. Let's just cut him off. Yeah, let, let's just cut him off. But this is, this is the ultimate rabbit hole. This is the pinnacle. This is... Yeah the ultimate deception. And if, if let's just say this is true, you know what I'm saying? Let's just say that NASA is lying. And again, they've been lying about everything. Let's just say this all comes full circle and this deception is exposed. They have too much to lose at this point. They can't let this get yeah. out. Ninth, because this, no, well, the latest, is God is the, the only latest. one that's going to reveal this. I mean, uh, personally, personally, I mean, I'm more of a, maybe a pessimist, but I, I consider myself a realist. A lot of people say, oh, the whole world is like, Five years or less, they're all going to wake up to the truth of the flat Earth. Unfortunately, I believe that it's false. I mean, if yeah, but people still haven't woke up, woke up to 9/11, believe, like you said earlier. 9/11 is exactly. still questionable yeah, to people. Compartmentalized, but we all have a task, man. One, it's one person at a time. Don't have, it's just the reality. And I would say that Satanist tranny that you were talking about, man, that person, man, needs to know the truth of Jesus because they die whether they know if the Earth is flat or not. Not going to help them if they have no redeemer and they die in their sins. They're in a lot of trouble, yeah. man, right? So we have to understand yeah. the priorities here, too, right? We have to look at it going, let's not get True. all caught up. It's pretty, it's pretty big. Don't, don't get me wrong. I was a mess. All I, could, I could talk about it nonstop. But after a while, we got to start thinking about it and say, okay, but you know what? It's in there. But when we're talking to the world, man, we got to understand, hey, man, we got to point that out and say, where are you at with this, man? Like, uh, do, do you believe he's a lunatic? Okay, whatever. At least you looked into it, whatever. But a lot of people parrot stuff, man. They say, I don't believe in the Bible. Have you read it? Well, no. And then people will say, oh, there's tons of errors in the Bible. Oh, what errors? Most troubling. Yeah, have you read it? <laughs> have you read it? Say, and we, say, hey, hey, look, Robbie, no Robbie. Bible, tell to point it out. Robbie, me, me and Renegade have a mutual friend that's a good friend of ours. You know what I'm saying? And for years, I've been trying to plant seeds for him. Oh, the Bible was written by men. You know, the same thing you were saying earlier. But have you read it? Yeah, yeah. Have you sit down and actually looked into it for yourself? Yeah. No, you haven't. You've just been going off of what everybody else, you know, just the group like Just yeah, like flat earth. Thing. I, did, I, did I did it for years. I did it for years. I told people they were idiots for believing in a book. I mean, what a bunch of fairy tales, a bunch of men. I, I had all the same lines. So when I talk to people, I understand. It doesn't bother me, their response to me, because I was that way. I had to actually, when I got saved, go to Christians that I had actually really persecuted and say, I beg for your <laughs> forgiveness. And they forgave me. They, say, they were praying <laughs> for me. But I had to actually go to them and make reconciliation because I felt bad, man. I actually was hardcore on Christians. Like, I would actually make it my mission to be like, I want to see if I can get that, you know, a girl, some girl be a Christian. Yeah, Russell, some Jimmy's, like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, what, what, you know what I'll say? When, when, people say when, when people say uh, man wrote the Bible, I'll say man wrote your science book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah. 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 Ninja, Ninja, I love I love when Ninja chimes in because he's like on point all the time. 
So man wrote well, like the said, Bible, what? but so that he wrote the science book as well. But you believe that, right? But you don't believe in the Bible. Right. Science. Believe that science. I mean, well, it's science. It's science, though, because it's science. Science is truth. Well, like you can't, let's, you can't distort. Let's science. touch on this. Let's touch on this again. Like Renegade said earlier, the the natural uh, story again from nine eleven to everything else. Every quote unquote conspiracy theory that we can name right now at this point, you know, people believe these things. And they, they they don't ever want to touch that Bible. They don't ever want to get into that because oh well that's that's a programming mechanism. That's that's for control. They want to control you. You, you know that's why? You know else. why they don't want to touch the Bible? They don't want to touch the Bible because the Bible will wake them up to the truth. The Bible will show them that they're living wrong, that they need to get saved, and that they're sinners. And it will show them all of that. And they don't. And then once they see that. Now they got to make a choice. Do I follow what this book says, which I found out to be true, or do I go back and live the, the life I was living before? They don't want to make right. that choice. So they put the Bible aside. So I'm not reading the Bible, because then I'm going to find out oh, who what? I am and what I am. That's why they don't right. want to read the Bible. If they don't push the Hold on, Danny. If they don't push the, if they don't push the Bible aside, Ninja, what they do is they take the Bible, and then they conform it to their ways, and then they create yeah, a Yeah, there you go. That's true. That's true, too. Well, well, you guys brought this up. You guys brought this up earlier in the show, and, and Rene- Renegade and Ninja have always said this on this show. Either the Bible is 100% accurate or it's 100% false. <laughs> there is no in-between yep. at, at the point. No so it has, it has to be 100% accurate or it has to be, sure. you know, and that's what they always well, point out. Well, always, always, what about this in the New Testament? That's crazy. Oh, uh, 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 it's, it's all false. No. I'm, and that, I'm telling you, you know, I'm, I'm still – I'm still reading the Bible, trying to figure out and find in there, as I mentioned to Robbie and and Ninja earlier, show me in the Bible, Christian, where it says that God put this all in motion. It doesn't. Actually, the Bible contradicts that thought. It says it's stationary, unmovable. It ain't going anywhere. We are the apple of God's eye. Everything revolves around this. Now, hold on a minute. That might be for a lot of people. Yeah. Right. But, but but you know what? Is that so much? To, is that so much to understand? I, I don't get no, that. Not, Why is that blow away people? And, it just shows God's love. Is how strong it is. And you know, going back to earlier, you know, Robbie was talking about distance, distancing God. Well, when you know that the waters above are so below, we are basically living in God's sea. That just shows you how much closer to God we really are. So you start believing all this other stuff and going with it. You're just distancing God. You're no, pushing Renegade, him away. Renegade, Renegade Ninja brought up a good point last week when I was listening to the show. You know, everybody rides down the street. If you're speeding and you see the cop, you're going to slow down. If people understand that there's a God watching us, everything we're doing, people are going to, like, change what they're doing. But that's, again, part of the deception. They They have painted the illusion that, yeah, you can become your own God, and you can do what you want to do. Do what thou wilt, right? Because there's no consequences to any of your actions. Alice but that's Crawley, not true. man. It's not Alice true. Alice Crawley and Tom LeVay, do what thou wilt. Do what you will. Yeah, do what thou yeah. wilt. Um, <clears throat> no, I was just going to say, too, you... with this, uh, real quick, Renegade, right with, this, uh, with this guy, you know, uh, Chris, uh, <laughs> you know, Whatever his name is, he died, right? I, you know, I listened to Chris the Cornell. sound guard, Chris Cornell. Chris okay. Cornell. Okay, we can speculate all we want, but I can guarantee you this guy was intertwined in some things that if he was a Christian going into the music industry, they were like, well, you have to dismiss that all that. You have to start all over and understand that, you know, this is a different system. And if you want this, and this goes into entertainment in Hollywood as well. Um, they do practice some weird things, and Renegade, we've done shows yeah. on this uh, in the past. Casting but, um, couch. Yeah, what you were saying earlier, you know, maybe – I don't I don't want to get off subject, but maybe his contract was up and they were collecting. Maybe he was murdered. Again, but this goes to all these celebrities throughout the last years that I've been paying attention, you know, because normally – you be like, oh, celebrity guy. I'm just going to post their music all day long on my my, my Facebook right. feed, and oh, uh, they become I'm gods. such a fan. Yeah, after they, they die, oh, gods. I'm such a fan, right? But here's the thing, right? You have to take an oath at a certain point. You have to join or bond yourself to the music industry and the entertainment industry, yep. and that's what I'm saying with with you and Ninja and other artists. This is why you guys are not sought after because you are. I don't want to be. 
Exactly. You already had the concept in your mind that you understand how these things work. Now, if he was murdered or he hung himself or he was another victim of uh, auto <laughs> auto erotic asphyxiation is up for debate. We don't know. We don't know toxicology or what's going to come out from his death. Maybe he was on meds, you know what I'm saying? And what does Big Pharma say in all their commercials? May cause suicidal side effects. <laughs> you know, they always throw that in when it's oh, like a girl well, riding have, their they, bike. They, <laughs> They have, they have their depression. excuses. You know? they, have their, they have their excuses within the industry why this person killed herself or that person had an overdose. Why would he kill himself, though, know. Renegade? I mean, he was living a life. I mean, he just did right. a show, a live show in Detroit with his band and was living a life. I mean, even if, I mean, he could get laid if he wanted to. I'm just saying. Like, there's no reason to do that. But, you know... I don't. I don't really think he was an alcoholic or anything, but I know he cleaned himself up in the no, last years. No, he cleaned years himself up. Yeah, yeah, he was. So I don't he understand. Was clean, fifty-two-year-old man. Looking into a lot of celebrities, though, you started looking into a lot of celebrities, and the rich, they're empty, man. They're like they are just void. They're like I've been sold a lie, yes. and there is no value. There's no worth to their life. You have to understand, they're spiritually dead, right? They're spiritually yeah, exactly. dead. So they're basically exactly. zombies walking around and partying and you know, screwing girls and whatever, but really they're dead inside. There is, so they know there's something missing. Unfortunately, they've been, you know, told this story, they, whether they sold their souls or they just completely are spiritually blind to it. it. It's sad, but the whole world longs. We think we'd be so happy. But if you actually really talk to, you know, celebrities, you actually talk to the rich, they're miserable, man. They're miserable. They can't even yes. stay married longer than like a couple of years. I mean, we're, we're right. dealing with a world that paints this picture that this is the upper echelon. This is where you want to achieve. But if you go to these people and their families, and their lifestyles, they're empty. We think they're having a, a party time, but they're probably like sobbing. <laughs> they're probably naturally <laughs> depressed because again, they don't have the Lord. They don't have, they don't have that right, yeah. puzzle piece. They try to look for it in drugs or, you know, or sex or fame. Or, it doesn't matter. Work and nothing fits, man. Nothing fits. Unfortunately, hopefully before they die, they actually, you know, get to actually, you know, have that chance, right? We don't all get afforded the, the right to Well, that's you know, what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe his only outlet was to end his life. And like I said, this continues to happen. I mean, we hear of overdoses mm-hmm. from famous all comedians. Well, to, yeah. Yeah. They're perfect you know, excuses. I'm just saying, well, let's I mean, blame maybe... It's maybe, like a 9-11... Maybe, it's, it's almost like a 9-11 inside job. Well, let's give you our official story, you know, and believe that. Oh, he committed suicide. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. their official I, story. I, I, I didn't want to get into this whole subject, but I think this is important because, like I said, after, you know, nobody really cares about you or wants to talk about you until you die. And that this happened with him today, and this happened with Prince <laughs> last year, and this happened with Robin Michael Jackson. Williams. Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. I can go on and right. on and on. Oh, like, oh, 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 he was all, so... All the, all the he biggest so fans, great. even though, even though they weren't biggest fans, they stepped up. But hey, guys, I want to wrap this show up real quick. I want to give Robbie the floor, brother. Thank you so much yeah, for good. coming on the show, Daddy. Thank well, you for calling, it, brother. But uh, yeah, Robbie, Renegade, I want to hear from you. Uh, Renegade, I'm going to mute then. myself and uh, thank you for taking my call, Ninja Scroll. Oh, I absolutely. love what you guys do. If you do a part three, you know, what I'm saying I may call in next week or whatever. I don't know what you're doing, uh, but I appreciate you know you guys even taking the initiative to do a show like this because like I said, we heard a show last night where it was just mocked and ridiculed and it's yeah. just, you know, it's, just, it's, it's not funny to me. I don't think this is a funny subject uh, along no, with the, uh, everything else that we cover. So, um, you know, I appreciate you renegade, you know, you know that Thanks, you're like a brother to me at I this point. You, so I'm going to let you guys do what you do and uh, I'll be, you know, listening to the end of the show here and we'll be in touch for sure. Hey, hey, hey before you jump off, I, before you jump off, I want to tell you one thing. I saw right. one of your recent posts. I didn't comment. <laughs> I prayed for you. You're going yeah, through man, some things I'm... in your life. You go, hey, listen, I, I don't want to trail off on this. I want to give Robbie the floor real quick. I do. I got to, you know, I got to pay for that dollar. But I'm gonna t- I want to. I want to tell you something. You don't have to comment on this. You're going right. through some things in your life. It's a test. It's a test against how the very the essence of who you are. Don't blow it off. Like ain't nothing happening. Oh, I can't, I, you know, every time I turn here, I turn there, it's, it's a bad thing. No, it's right. a learning experience. You are being powered up, brother. You are being powered up. I'm going to tell you something. When you get through this test, this little speed bump, all it is is a speed bump. You got a good mind to you, Denny. Come yeah. out on the other side of this in victory. And guess what's going to happen then? You are going to be able to testify to other people. 
and help other people out as well that went through Amen. what you're going through. It's going to happen. I'm telling you, you are going through it right now. So don't, don't sit here and, like, you know, count your losses. No, count your victories. Count right. your victories. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate yeah. that, Renegade. And like I said, like I said, we've been through a lot, man, over the years. And um, like I said, write my number down, man, and just, you know, I'll give you a call it. or we'll be in it's touch. It's in my phone, sure. brother. It's in my, it's in my and, phone. Uh, uh, and I apologize for not reaching out to you uh, earlier, Renegade, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I'm dealing That's with all good, man. <laughs> my place full. But I'm going to leave you guys to it. And, again, thank you for doing the show here tonight, man. I definitely appreciate it. Next week, hey, hopefully you, you guys can in. Uh, yeah, do what you do. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan and supporter of what you do, Renegade. You know, I love you, man. Hey, you're like a you're, besides, you're family to besides, me. Besides, besides calling in, brother, exactly. Yeah, you give me a call anytime you want. You got my number, right, and now I have you. yours. I've actually had yeah, yours until my phone, but. When I'm looking at the, the <laughs> studio, I don't have a list of numbers, so I'm like, what is this number? <laughs> but anyway, Danny, for real, listen, man, for real, I'm telling you, stay strong. You you are going to be a testimony. You are going to be a testimony. Right. You got this thing. Hang tight, man. Hang strong. Be strong. You got this thing. So, yeah, man, Robbie, you, no, no problem, man. I love you, man. Robbie, you, you want to wrap this? Go, go to it. All right. Ro- Thank you for calling in, man. For real, Danny. Thank you. Robbie, go ahead and uh, you, you, final thoughts. The floor is yours. No, it was great. Good call, man. Good encouragement. Good words that uh, he said. And hopefully, uh, like I said, man, we'll lift him up in prayer for whatever he's going through. But, yeah, I mean, in this subject matter, you're going to be on the front lines, man. It's not for the weak-minded. And, again, it's not for you to rely on your own strength, man. You've got to ask for God's strength. You've got to ask for God's patience, his mercy. You've got to really ask for the heart of God with this, that you can see things the way God sees them, the way you hear things the way God hears them, uh, and really rest in the Lord with all of this, man, because seriously, any of us trying to battle this or go out in this, I mean, we're going to get beat down, man, we're going to get beat down. I mean, spiritually, if we're going into it with our own strength, we're going to get beat down. The same thing with this. This is a massive spiritual deception that has been held so close quarters for so long and we're talking the mother load here. We're talking really big. It's not just a deception of lies. This is spiritual in nature. And again, people are going to freak out. People are going to lose their mind because, again, everything unravels if this thing comes apart. So understand that there's a lot of opposition. But yeah, take heed, man. I mean, you, you know, he that is greater than, in us is greater than he who is in the world. And again, this is Absolutely. what we're dealing with is the God of this world, which is Satan. We have victory over him, over NASA, over the government, over the elite, the Bilderbergs, it doesn't matter. The fact is, we are called to do the Great Commission, to go out, to preach the good news, and basically give people the truth. And the truth is found in no other than Jesus. And again, I'm going to leave it at that. And anyone's interested in my material, it's CelebrateTruth.org. That's my website. And YouTube, uh, or catch me on Facebook, Robbie Davidson. And uh, we will uh, we will chat soon. Thanks so much for having me on. It's uh, been a real pleasure, and uh, definitely love to come back sometime. You know what, Robbie? I, w- I want to say one thing before we uh, wrap this thing up. What you just said right there. When I pray at night, I pray for not only guidance and wisdom. And I'm not going to give my testimony right now, nor is uh, Ninja Scroll. That's going to be the last episode of this. But I pray at night for wisdom. I pray for guidance. And I also pray for protection against the New World Order and all their, all of their devices. And there are many. Yeah, that's, that's a future show we're going to be doing is uh, the levels of attack that we're on. Not only, mm-hmm. you know, um, physically, but mentally. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, let's open up the, uh, the lion's cage because that's going to be a big one. Just like the real truth of Flat Earth. And we, we kind mm-hmm. of uh, touched on the flat earth society. Don't, don't go to them for your answers. Go to someone like Robbie Davidson. As a matter of fact, don't come to me. Go to him. He's, <laughs> I mean, you can't come to me. I'm not going to lead you in the wrong way, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to direct you back to this man right here. Robbie, I'm going to tell you something. i got a lot of respect for you, brother. Um, when, you know, I'm not giving my testimony now, but... Your videos and the brilliance in that and God's hand in that was was a part of just waking, really waking me up to the truth. It was an answer to my prayer. And once That's again, me. God revealed himself to me. And that is the, 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 the biggest part of it all. 
I once again had confirmation how real God is. Now, there's other instances where God has revealed himself had nothing to do with flat earth, or I should mm-hmm. say the earth, this enclosed mm-hmm. system we live in, his creation. It had nothing to do with mm-hmm. that. But when that came along, I had to open up my eyes. I couldn't refuse it. And I saw it, and I was led to, led to you, brother. And I want to thank you for your time, and I want to thank you for all that you do. You are in my prayers. You are, you are speaking out in a big way. So everyone listening tonight, keep Robbie in your prayers. Strength, protection, and you know, well-being. Brother, keep doing what you're doing. And thank you so much once again for your time coming on tonight. Well, thanks for having it's me, guys. It's been an honor. Keep doing what you're doing. It, it's awesome that uh, you're putting yourself out there and interviewing a lot of great people and uh, getting people the resources they need to, to fight the good fight. So congrats to both of you. Well, hey, hopefully uh, soon in the future. Well, we know the Flat Earth Conference is coming up. I will be posting right. links to that. And, um, brother, hopefully we'll be able to like, already... meet, uh, meet both of you in uh, November. Uh, oh, by the way, we are coming. Me and Sean, we will That's be there. Awesome. I'm already looking at the car we... rental, room rental. It's the done deal. It's going to so... be a blast, man. It's going to be a blast. Stay the weekend. Most people uh, are staying the, the whole weekend, if you, if you guys can manage it, because it's, uh, it's going to be – it's going to be uh, something never to be uh, forgotten, that's for sure. We're going to put on a really hey, great if, uh, event, but, again, the friendships and just the people. I'm so excited to meet so many yes. different brothers that have been in this fight and just other people. Uh, it's just going to be really exciting to just meet everyone, bond, and, hey, man, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be able to, like, hang out and, uh, yeah, really get to yeah, know exactly. one another. And, uh, I'm looking forward to meeting yep. everyone. So, yeah, it's going, to be a, c- it's going to be a great event, so I'm happy to hear you guys are going to be there. I cannot wait to shake the hands of not only you but other people involved as well. Uh, you mentioned Carly, and well, I know personally know a whole bunch of other people going down, which is going to be really mm-hmm. nice um, to actually get mm-hmm. to meet. And um, yeah, once again, you know, <laughs> the New World Order's internet, you know, to basically uh, quickly share information about us, um, kind of backfired on them because there's a whole slew of people out there uniting under truth, yep. under the real yep. truth. That yeah. is Jesus yeah, it's Christ. It's encouraging. God. It's really awesome. And yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah, and so many people are taking the Bible what? seriously. I've never, I've never seen. I'll, t- I'll, leave, I'll leave off one more thing though. The, 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 I mean, I've been in the truth movement for a long time. I've never seen one quote unquote conspiracy, or I've never seen one deception or something that's been covered up that people have started looking into that have led them to the Bible. I've never seen anything in my life, nothing remotely close to how many people start picking up a Bible and start reading it seriously, trying to understand, hey, we've been lied to. I want to understand what the creation is all about and what the truth is all about, and, and it's found in the Bible. So I get testimonies like every day. I've got people that have told me they have got on their knees after watching scientism exposed in tears. I mean, I get testimonies all the time, and I can awesome. just say one thing. Awesome. If everyone wants to say, you know, this is, you know, who cares about this? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I've never seen more people being drawn to the Bible when they understand that they've been lied to because, again, there was a loving creator, that they did have value and That's purpose, right. and every ounce of that has been distorted from being taught that you come from a monkey or that you're part of a random accident. Man, don't believe those lies, man. Nothing could be further from the truth. You're created special, unique. This place is special and unique. Everything was created for it, not vice versa. So, yeah, man, search the truth, and man, look to the Bible. And if you're skeptical and you think it's just a book, think again, man, because if you really start opening it, it's going to speak to you and it's going to change your life. Well, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Whether you're an atheist or not, um, I recently saw someone upload a picture into um, Flat Earth and Christ. Flat Earthers and Christ, the group on Facebook, which Mm is Mm -hmm. rocking. And um, Mm -hmm. I think it was that one, but they posted a picture of a Bible sitting on their countertop. And this person said, I have been an atheist my whole life until I researched Flat Earth. Then I realized there was a creator. I couldn't question it anymore. I bought my mm-hmm. first Bible, and that, what that, that's what that picture was. So this person... Yeah, there's no atheist in flatter. There's flatter. no atheist in flatter. None. Yeah, it's Thank impossible. You, you believe in a creator. So, Robbie, yeah. man, brother, I'm telling you, you are doing some amazing things. I've got your back. I, you've got so much respect for me. Um, you're in my prayers as well, for real. Thanks, man. Hey, keep I appreciate doing what you're it. Yeah. doing. And I would love to have you on again in the future because, you know what, 
there's so many other directions we could have went into it. I was trying to keep it with you, but it's the web of lies is so big. It's like we can't help but to trail off a little bit. But thank oh, you for, for calling sure. in, brother. Okay, man. Everybody, I it, man. Thank you, and blessings to everyone. Oh man, it's going to happen again, and I will be seeing you, and I will be shaking your hand down in North Carolina. Absolutely. So all the listeners out there, thank you for tuning in. This is a new element on Infinite Source Broadcast Network. Robbie Davidson, check him out. Celebrate Truth, check them out on YouTube. And by all means, get on there. And, Robbie, what's the website where they can find all the info? Yeah, the website Yeah, the website's celebratetruth.org. That's the uh, ministry website. There we go. Listeners, thank you once again for tuning in. This is Renegade Smith, joined by Ninja Scroll, and he's a little bit busy tonight, so I ain't blaming him for that. You know, we all got to do what we got to do. Robbie, thank you for your time, brother. Much love for you. Keep up the fight and stay strong. May God bless every step you take. Dennis Ford, thank you for your time and calling in. As for me, Renegade Smith, Ninja Scroll, Robbie Davidson, and Denny, you all have a good night. God bless you. Fight for truth. Fight for freedom. God bless. Take care. How about the, the recent push to implement intelligent design in school curriculums? That's, it's very dangerous. bad. It's dangerous. very dangerous. Dangerous. You don't mess with, with, with the truth. You can see an agenda. And you know, oh, yeah. you I mean, mentioned I'm, the fad. I heard, I heard. Oh, oh, you mentioned about it being a fad. Yeah, people. Oh, yeah, this year is trending right now. You know, you're, you're, this is something new in your life. No, this is forever. Because once he puts, yeah, places his hand on your heart, you completely change. And the funny thing is, I heard the same thing about flat Earth, and I laughed. I go, a fad. I go, no, the fad is a spinning ball belief. I go because up until 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat. But now it's questionable, and people believe it's spinning ball. So it's, that's funny you brought that fat thing up, because I was just talking well, about and you brought up, Yeah, and you brought up earlier on, you were kind of talking about, and this is the interesting thing about a lot of people in enclosed cosmology or in you know, research when it gets into the earth and the cosmos, is most of these people that basically are willing to go down that road have already been you know, open with a lot of things, whether, like you mentioned, chemtrails or GMOs. But getting into 9-11, right. what I explain to a lot of people, this subject matter, if you're sitting here listening to this show right now and you're having a hard time believing the government could even be involved in 9-11, this stuff is cool. you're just going to laugh at. You probably won't even compute, right? You've got to start at JFK. Is there anything suspicious about JFK? Move to 9-11. You know? So for a lot of people that are in flat earth and closed cosmology, I would imagine that most of them have kind of gone through that thing where they've gone up to like learning about the Illuminati or getting into the elite and getting into right. the Luciferian, you know, order of like Bohemian Grove. I usually run into someone. Yeah, who? There you go. Say, hey, Bohemian Grove. If someone knows Bohemian Grove or they know the, the Georgia Guidestones, usually you're in good company. You can start moving even deeper stuff. But if you're dealing with someone right. they never even heard of Bohemian, they never heard of Skull and Bones, they've never heard of, you know, secret societies, and they're even still going, yeah, but the official report of 9-11, I mean, yeah, it was hijackers, four planes, you know. you got to go back, man. You can't start talking about Bohemian chemtrails. I mean, the, the idea of people poisoning us, that won't compute with someone thinking the idea that they couldn't even do 9-11, right? So you always have to go baby steps. I find that it's really smart, and that's what yes. we're going to get into tonight. When it comes to my film that I came out with, Scientism Exposed, my idea with that was to come out and just start that journey. Just get people with a couple of right. questioning things, going, hey, that's interesting. Maybe I'll look into that, you know? And it was funny, when we talked 9-11, um, I, I got in this so many times, our government would never attack us. Oh yeah, well look back in the nineteen eighties with the move the move fire down in Philadelphia. How about this one? Go to Waco, Texas. Tell me the government don't attack its own people. They they, they do experiments all the time without our knowledge. It's mm -hmm. it's horrible. So anyway, yeah, get let's see, um man, you're, you're, I'm telling you something, your testimony is awesome. Because uh, like I said, yeah, I was so I mean, on the phone yeah, and like up, the, hearing how yeah, awake you are is just like, wow, this is awesome. 
Yeah, I got into, I mean, I was fascinated by like uh, creation science. So for me, blowing the whole thing off evolution, because for me, I used to laugh at Noah's Ark. I used to laugh at the fact that people believe that God just made people, that of course it was evolution over millions of years. So I, mean, I bought into all of these things. So evolution was kind of my first breakdown. Even before I got into like when we're talking 9-11, chemtrails, all that, my first kind of world shift, my first, my worldview was really hitting the scientism, you know, of, of the day. And again, evolution was a big one for me. I mean, under Standing like, oh wow, this has all been a lie. Like, there's been a cover up. They've actually purposely tried to deceive mankind. What the? Why would they do that? I mean, how many people would be involved? So I was fascinated, and then seeing all the true science and even good scientists that were coming forward, supporting the data, showing that yeah, I mean, there is more data showing that we're you know er, you know early on you know early in, in our development than billions and trillions of years you know, and then getting into different things, and then it would lead me into you know like I said eschatology. I studied all the world religions. I started studying all the cults. I started understanding all the different uh, branches of Protestantism, understanding Catholicism. But again, we went for years and years, just I was like a sponge. I mean, I couldn't get enough. So I wanted to know, okay, aliens, what's the Christian take on that? I'm going to study that, which led me into the Nephilim and getting into that, which was really fascinating. But what, what I found really cool was that the Book of First Enoch speaks way more about creation than it does about the fallen ones, the watchers, the Nephilim, which I found really intriguing afterwards when I got into the subject matter. But again, this is the thing, this is the point, is I had studied a lot of things. So I don't need to understand that the world was governed out of the party in front of everyone by my ear. Okay? Needless to wow. say, we only got a few blocks away at the stoplight. I jumped out. I called him every name in the book including ones oh. that can't even, even talk about as a Christian, let alone as a non-Christian, <laughs> but I just lost it. And at that point, my downward spiral began. I got more into drugs. Mm. I got into a wilder crowd. I just kind of spiraled, right? So it was at the age of 21. I'm living, you know, clubbing, and I'm, you know, hanging out and stuff. And anyways, uh, you know, I had this talk, and a few days went back, went by, and I'm still going out to the clubs doing stuff. Well, I was staying over at my parents in the basement, and I remember it was about, you know, three, it was around, I don't know, three, four in the morning. And I remember kind of waking up and there was like this presence around me. And all I remember is I put up my hands and said, I am coming to you. It was really weird. That's all I remember. But I went back to sleep. The next morning I woke up and I'm looking and my parents have all these VHS tapes on the wall, uh, you know, old VHS tapes for the VCR. But the one that they had sitting in there that was glowing, I mean, it was glowing, was Jesus, you know, Jesus the film, you know. So I threw it in. I just was drawn to it. I grabbed it because the guy had already talked to me a few days earlier about this Jesus guy that I never really understood. So I'm like, you know what, I'm going to check this out. Threw it in the VCR. remember watching it. At the end of it, I got on my knees and I gave my life to Christ. And that was it. And then since then... I've been involved with, like, prison ministry, youth ministry. I've been involved in, like, different medias. I've been in the Christian music industry. I've been in the, you know, television, uh, radio. I've been in, um, you know, print. I've been in a lot of different Christian media and a lot of different ministries. So I got really involved in my pursuit and kind of growing with God and just understanding. Because at that point, I'm like, I want to know everything. I want to know what does it say about aliens, you know. Let me me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question real quick. I want to to kind of go back to what you just said. Um, well, sure. for one, you mentioned about, you know, you're talking to your buddy. He's like, yeah, I got to you know, get to bed. You know, I got to get to church. And you're like, oh, your parents are driving you to church. You know, my uncle, had, uh, who's a pastor, made a joke at my grandmother's funeral recently. And he's like, yeah, I was a child. I was drugged or something like that. And we're all like, huh? He's like, yeah, she, she drugged me to a church every Sunday. <laughs> so the same drag, she drugged me to church. So it, it was a funny joke. But um, when you popped in that movie, and you start changing your ways. Now, this this is a big moment in your life. Let's be let's be real here, because that's a well, big moment for a lot of God people out there. Had to come to me. Yeah, because I had ignored yeah. cause I had ignored God. I was walking the other way, and it actually took super like supernatural intervention. And being yep. saying, no, 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 like, I don't think you understand. You know, you're going to serve me, and I'm going to show you the most incredible journey of your life. And that's exactly what he's done thus far, for sure. Now, what happened, though, at so, that time? Now, you're saying you were running with this one, one crowd, which we all were. I know I was. I know Ninja one by was. one, they left me. One by one, I became there the Bible freak. I became that guy that, hey, it's like, you know, you're cool and all that, dog, you know, but don't mention that Jesus stuff, you know? So one by one, I just started distance myself. I mean, I just, I mean, if did, it was one thing or the other, uh, yeah, I mean, that's one thing that you learn really you, early on that, did, uh, yeah, now, a lot, you lose your friend. Did, 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 you, did you deal with the ridicule? Did you deal with people laughing at you and telling you you were stupid? 
And you're believing in a, I was in so a, on fire. Myth. I didn't care. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't care. I mean, I was I was so on fire that I'm just like, dude, man, you, you know, you need to repent. I mean, I was like the type of guy that got so on fire that I'd be like running down the street telling people that you know they better repent or they're going to burn in hell, kind of thing. I was in and that's what happened. I was passionate, <laughs> but I was like so completely just on fire, on top. I mean, and again, before I got saved in school, the only books I would read are the books that are required for passing the actual course. I hated reading. Right. Well, when I got saved, I sat down. I remember, because this was the following weekend, I sat down in a 24-hour diner, and I remember sitting there, and I basically polished off the entire New Testament in one sitting. I did not move. I just polished the entire thing. I started off Matthew, Mark, Luke. So I, read, I mean, readers would come out to me like, dude, what are, you, what are you reading? I'm like, the Bible. Like, I mean, they could just see this joy. They could yeah. just lit up. And I remember a lot of people were saying, dude, wow, you're like glowing. I mean, you're alive. Like, something's going on. And people are like, That's oh, what happened. <laughs> It's a fad, you know, he's going to get into something else. And I remember people were saying, you know what, five years time, you're going to be into something else. It's just a fad. I'm like, this is not a fad. So one by one, I mean, I had to, you know, people that actually were very dismissive or that were very skeptical have all been silenced based on the fact that, uh, you know, it's now, you know, over you know 20 years and still going strong. By evil, evil people. It says in the Bible that Satan truly is the God of this world. You know, God warns all the time, do not love the world or anything in the world, right? The world's wisdom is foolishness to God. And again, what is the world's wisdom? It's usually the rocket scientist or the nuclear physicist. Or, you know, we're, we, we yes, put these right. people up on high pedestals in our day and say, these are our elite. These are the ones that have all the knowledge. They've got the degrees. They've gone to school. They're a lot smarter than me, so I'm going to trust them. But unfortunately, same, right. like you were talking about the music industry before, they sold their souls for rock and roll. I believe a lot yep. of these guys... Not all, but a lot of these guys have sold their soul for pushing Satanism or pushing uh, scientism because scientism is nothing more than Satanism without the robes, right? Instead of robes, it's, it's uh, lab coats. So that's my point: yep. is it's been disguised and it's been put into a system that is not another belief, it's not another spiritual, you know, uh, religion. It is fact. It's reality. You don't argue with science, right? So they get us. They get us because they'll, they'll present something as science. But when you start breaking this stuff open and find out there's a massive difference between science and scientism, and that's what we'll discuss tonight because the entire Earth yes. and the cosmos and everything we see, the majority of it is astonishing and shocking when you find out the majority of the stuff that you believe were fact, it was scientifically proven, when you apply the scientific method and when you actually bring that to fruition, you don't find anything that sits in the realm of true science using empirical, you know, the true given scientific method. What you find are theories, the theory of evolution, the theory of gravity, the theory of relativity, the theory of yep. I mean, on and on it goes. But again, this is what's so dangerous, and I say this all the time, is everyone, if you're an atheist, an agnostic, a Buddhist, a Christian, a Muslim, I don't care what you are, every single person's worldview from an early age is shaped by scientism. How incredible exactly. to think from an early age that we start having reform our own beliefs, even in the truth community, but we mm -hmm. still have it enclosed in this scientism worldview. So therefore, aliens, okay, well then we're starting to think Star Trek and Star Wars because our, our worldview has been presented. What happens yes. if that worldview gets shattered and you find out, wait a minute, if you read the Bible and you start looking with your own senses, these two match up and you say, wait a minute, no, they couldn't have lied about this. This is too big. And that's the basically big point here is this thing is so incredibly big that all the other things fit inside of it and they start making sense you brought up global warming it was kind of funny talking about the heat but do you understand that the whole ozone layer and how they prescribe the whole global warming is destroyed when you take rid of the globe there is no there yeah, exactly is no global warming there is no climate change it's all completely None. lies and they're pushing an agenda yep. to enslave all of us and to pay our carbon tax but of course we all yep. have to do our part to save mother earth Oh, of course, Mother Gaia. Mother Gaia. And I've seen so many awake people who claim to be awake go, you know, Mother Gaia. But, um, but really, you're awake? Well, no, you're not. You better do some more research. Uh, so go, go back into your testimony, Robbie. You know, once you, yeah, know, okay, so, so you mean, became a Christian yeah, and, then, then, and you, you started running, you know, running down the streets and proclaiming your Jesus well, and, yeah, I mean, and I was, all this stuff. So super passionate. what happened? Yeah, there? I was super passionate. I was super passionate, but all I'm saying is I was really immature at the beginning, but I was really like on fire and I was passionate. But again, it just led me into so many things. I was like a sponge. I studied all the world religions. Because again, part of me, what was really interesting is the first year I doubted like crazy. And I remember praying 
and saying, Lord, take this away. I don't even want to doubt. I just, I want to go 100%. And it was almost like I needed to fight for it. I needed, it was like prove all things the Bible says. And apologetics became a big part of my entire uh, mission uh, when it came down to my ministry. I got heavy duty into apologetics because I didn't want to just believe something. I wanted the truth. And again, this is the ideal thing that we hear all the time is we hear, you know, the pursuit of truth or truth seekers or we hear the truth movement. But really, there was one person that claimed the embodiment of all truth is Jesus. He said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Right. John 14, 6. But what's really intriguing about that is either Jesus truly is who he said he is. Or he's not. People say, oh, you know, he's a prophet or he's a good man. He claimed to be divinity. I mean, there's so many later. Um, you know, like the title of the show, Flat Earth Testimonies. We want to hear from you. We want to hear, now, I, I know, kind of know your story. I mean, you were, I had the honor of talking with you on the phone a couple, uh, you know, a month or so ago. And, but for the listeners out there, show them, you know, introduce them to, to Robbie Davidson. Introduce them to, you know, from when you were younger, you know, the whole story of, you know, you really waking up the truth. Um, now, I, I, I'm starting to realize something about people that are, that are waking up and really know the earth for what it is. They are, they're wise to other things, you know, whether it be the music industry, the satanic music industry, chemtrails, or the dangers of vaccines and GMOs and stuff like that, which you are. So it's like everyone starts off and they get in what's called the truth movement. Or, you know, you don't have to call it the truth movement, but people wake up from their slumber. And they push away the lies. And then the next thing you know, like, our research just doesn't stop there. We keep looking at questions and things and going, huh, now this doesn't make sense. And I want everyone out there to hear this. <clears throat> There's a lot of people awake. We can, sp- I can't, st- and I'm sure you can't stand this either, but the term PSYOP. The flood earth is a PSYOP. Listen, you're not dealing with people who are calling out PSYOPs. We know a PSYOP, but we also know what a lie is and what indoctrination is. And we're stepping forth and saying there's something wrong here. So, Robbie, give us your testimony, brother. From, from you know, day one, your whole, give, us your, give us your story leading up until now. And, you know, well, give all details, yeah, by all means. The kind of floor is off. yours. I, mean, I, 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 actually didn't, I actually didn't get saved until the age of 21. So, I led a pretty rebellious life, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll. And uh, in my youth, um, I would say that a lot of what modern day science had taught me, that's what kind of kept me away from any notion that there would be this benevolent God or creator. Or I just thought it was fairy tales. It was nonsense. I mean, I used to take pleasure, you know, tormenting Christians. I used to, you know, take pleasure making fun, ridiculing them. So, I mean, when I get it now... I can totally relate and understand because at one point I was that guy that would be out there. And I mean, really, it wasn't really big. The computer internet wasn't really around much then, but I probably might've even been a keyboard warrior at that point. Cause I thought it was so ridiculous. And that's so amazing about what God can do to someone's life is just completely and radically change it. And that's exactly what happened to my life at the age of, you know, 21. So I'm going along, you know, doing whatever. And anyways, this one guy, you know, I started talking to, and it was fascinating. We got into, like, end times, eschatology, and I was just all fascinated. And I remember, uh, you know, I wouldn't say I was an atheist, but I'd say an agnostic. You know, I mean, I didn't know, but I didn't really care. I mean, I'm living my life, man. I'm having a good time. I'm partying, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll. I mean, don't bug me about this religion. I mean, that's, that's nonsense. Um, so, anyways, I got talking with a guy, and uh, anyways, I said at the end of the conversation, I said, yeah, it's okay, though, man, because, you know, I mean, I'm a good person, that type of thing, you know, and he's like, it's not enough. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's just like, you got to be perfect. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about, right? And he kind of explained, you know, how Jesus came, and he was perfect in the sacrifice. And anyways, I was like, wow, yeah, that's kind of cool. And we got into the mark of the beast and other things like this, which I was really fascinated because, I mean, you could see the, the articles in the news, and you could kind of see the way the world was getting, and, you know, this guy's bringing up the Bible, and it all actually started when you know we were out late one night and all of a sudden he said dude i gotta I got get home you know i gotta go to church in the morning and i said what i said your parents make you go to church he's like no i want to go and i'm like what 
you want to go to church? I just, I couldn't understand how someone at that age would want to go to church. I'm like, I thought that was your parents drag you because earlier on, my family was kind of more of a, you know, Easter, Christmas type of Christians as they drag us out. But I remember at 16, I remember there was that one time and I was going to this party and it was Christmas and my grandma had flew in and we were all going to go, you know, we did this every year. It was just a family thing that we did. We went to church service, you know, Christmas Eve, that kind of thing. And I remember it was like my grandma flew in and they're like, hey, you coming to church? I'm like, no way, man. I'm going to a party. And they're like, no, no, no. You better, you have to come. And I'm like, no. So I took off to the party. Well, my father came to the party because we were living in a small town at that point, And he dragged me. The new well. The new well. us that's me and you <laughs> it's that time again the new element in the house on this beautiful summer-like night so what's going on my man man it's hot man oh stop it it's hot stop it stop <laughs> it it ain't hot this is it's perfect hot weather here coast, not... baby it's may man it's hot hey i'm i'm gonna tell you something if this is global warming i'll take it Cause I'd rather be out here doing this, <laughs> feeling good in a tank top and in shorts. And if I want to run around and uh, want to run around the speedos, I'm going to do so. Cause guess what? There ain't a chill in the air, and I ain't got to shovel snow. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah I'll, I'll feel you it. on that. <laughs> I'll feel you on that. Yeah. So everyone listening, everyone listening right now, while we kind of you know kick this thing off, this is uh, May 18, 2017, and tonight it's part two, flat Earth testimonies. We have. A very special guest lined up. This guy's a warrior. He's an inspiration. And he's getting the word out. So I cannot wait to bring him in in a couple minutes here. Uh, and he's waiting in the background. We have Robbie Davidson with us. So mm-hmm. this is going to be this is going to be a good show. So anyway, you know, besides this wait, wait, amazing wait, weather, hold on before 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 we get started, man. I, I want to apologize to you and our listening audience and our guests. Cause I, you know, these shows that we do on Thursday night, I still, I'm still working. I start working like six in the morning, and I don't get done working until eleven thirty, twelve midnight. You know what I mean? So I want to apologize to you guys. Cause sometimes, you know, I got, I got to make the fake money. Cause, uh, and, you know, it's just rough. And, and, it's just rough trying to, trying to support, you know, the family and all that. So I apologize. We know how it Sometimes I'll be. Yeah, sometimes I'll disappear off the air and y'all won't hear me. Or I'll be, you know, saying a little bit of here, a little bit there. But, you know, I'm here. I'm here. Let's bring the man of the uh, of the night in, Mr. Robbie Davidson. Welcome to the show, brother. How are you? Hey, man, am, I on with, am I on with Renegade and Ninja? Yes, yes you, you are. are. It's an awesome, awesome, man. I'm, I'm, welcome, brother. Welcome. Guys. Good to so, have you on, man. 
well, before I ask you what's new with you, because we, we know what's new, we know what's coming, but we'll go into that a little 